not disappoint in their home opener, crushing UTEP 42 to 17. Pitt came into the season as the number 25 ranked team in the nation. They started strong against Bowling Green, taking an early 14 to nothing lead. However, the Panthers turned the ball over four times, which Bowling Green converted into 21 points, and Pitt could not recover in a stunning defeat. Which Pitt team will show up tonight against Buffalo? Find out next. side of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, game number two for the Bulls of Buffalo and the Panthers of the University of Pittsburgh. Panthers are 0-1. Buffalo is 1-0. We expect an astounding game here tonight. I'm John Sanders along with Doug Graber. We are delighted to have you with us. Let's talk about Pitt. This is almost, it's early in the year, Doug, but it's got to be almost a must-win situation. Well, that was a shocking defeat last week to Bowling Green, and there went the number 25 ranking, that's for sure. Didn't last very long. They also need to get LaShawn McCoy, who was terrific as a freshman, more involved in this offense. Well, they really do, and this is really probably the premier running back in the Big East Conference, the next great back at Pitt. He's got great size, 210 pounds. He can make you miss. He can run with power. Uh, he is really something special, and he has got to get out of the blocks tonight. He had all almost 1,400 yards last year as a true freshman. And Bill Stull is the quarterback, although a young quarterback in terms of game experience. Well, and that's exactly the issue. He's very, very young. This is really be his second full game as a starter. He did make some mistakes last week. He did some good things. He has to get a lot better tonight. Well, the Bulls of Buffalo did not make many mistakes against UTEP, led by the player of the week in the MAC conference. Drew Willie was outstanding. Oh, well, he really was, and this is a big 6-4 quarterback that throws the long ball extremely well. He has gone 251 straight throws without interception. Uh, he has been a great performer. They also had two running backs with over 100 yards led by James Starks. James Starks is probably the premier running back in the Mid-American Conference. He had big, big numbers last year and last week he averaged six yards a carry. So what's going to happen tonight? Let's get you set with our keys to the game. Let's start with the Bulls first well for, certainly for Buffalo I think uh, no interceptions that Willie has got that streak of 251 throws he, if they can keep that going that's really to their advantage uh, they have to hold McCoy to 4.0 per rushing attempt I think that's huge they have been a very good team in the red zone they've got to continue that what about Pittsburgh their keys to the game tonight well, for Pitt, uh, no fumbles. I mean, that was the key to the loss last week. They had three fumbles. They've got to hang on to the football. I think if they can break that streak of interceptions, uh, of no interception for Willie, that would be huge. And they have to stop the long ball. They're very concerned with that. And you know what? They should be. Dave Wanstead said his team had a terrific week of practice. They are ready to bounce back from the loss, their first ever here at home against the MAC team. They've got another MAC team coming up. The opening kickoff from Pittsburgh is straight ahead. Don't pay another mortgage payment or maintenance fee on your timeshare. Turn it into cash. Call timeshares only. We got rid of those maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only, for making it so easy. At timeshares only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. No more mortgage payments, no more maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only. Call timeshares only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. Our thousands of satisfied customers have made us the largest resale marketplace in the world. Call Timeshares Only now. Your free information kit with our 10 secrets on selling your timeshares waiting. The over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now could be the best time to sell. Call Timeshares Only today. Thank us tomorrow. Call Timeshares Only now and get your free information kit. Turn your timeshare into cash and never pay another mortgage payment, maintenance fee, or tax bill again. Don't wait. Call now. Call 800-314-0762. That's 800-314-0762. Call 800-314-0762 now. We are back and just about ready for the opening kickoff here at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Glad to have you with us as Buffalo takes on Pitt. Panthers trying to rebound. Buffalo will try to keep it going from a great week last week against UTEP. There is Turner Gill, the head coach. 
of the Bulls his third year eight and 17 but he is a guy really Doug who started to turn it around at Buffalo. Well he's done a fantastic job Bitterberg and coach of the year and of course here's Dave Onstead. he's had great recruiting classes started with a number 25 national ranking that was a major setback last week. And a little bit under the gun he definitely needs to get a victory here in this game. Luke Briggs will kick off the Panthers ready to go to work and as I said Dave wants that told both of us that this team had a very good week of work and they are ready to go here tonight trying to bounce back from their first ever loss at home against the Mac team they have lost to Mac teams three times overall but they had never lost a home game to a Mac team until last week. Crowd continues to file in on what has been a rather cloudy overcast day in the city of Pittsburgh. The ball is teed up and ready to go. And so are we. The kick is going to go out of bounds. Naaman Roosevelt was the deep man, but Naaman could not get to it. Goes out of bounds. The penalty would go against Pitt. It'll be an illegal procedure call and give him good field position to start the game, Doug. Well, it, it sure will. Well, will you on the 40 yard line first down yeah, and that's a change in the rules this year they've gone to the NFL rule and now that ball goes all the way out to the 40 yard line that is a, a, a very tough start Drew for Willie's the numbers in his career 31 touchdowns he had four touchdowns in the game last week against UTEP he will lead the offense checking the plays probably scripted wouldn't you think Doug to start a little bit. Oh I, absolutely there is he Turner Gill and he's of course the offensive coordinator as well so he calls all the plays as a former great quarterback at Nebraska he knows how to do that. Well they had some great years didn't they at Nebraska oh, wow. when he was there. He was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Little play action rolling left looking dumps it off pass complete. And knocked out of bounds. That was Jackson who made the catch. Number 21 picks it up. An eight yard pickup. Let's take a look at the rest of the Buffalo offense Starks, Sharon, Roosevelt, Jackson, and Jesse Rack, along with Norell, Bittner, Leza, Niedemeyer, who's probably their most veteran offensive lineman, and Andrew West. You know, in both of these teams huddle, which is kind of a unique deal in college football. Uh, most teams have gone to the no huddle. Both of these teams huddle. Three wideouts in this formation. Actually, actually four because you've got a guy in the slot, and that's going to be a keeper straight ahead across midfield. Roosevelt will probably pick up a first down on the play. We'll check the spot. He needs to get across to 50. It is a first down. Let's set the defense for the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Sheard, Williams, Duncan, Romeus are the men up front. And pretty much a standard defense for both of these teams, Doug. You see a lot of people going to the stack defense, but neither one of these teams, Chappelle, Thatcher, DeSicchio, among the linebackers for Pitt, out of the shotgun, thrown right over the middle, complete and caught that time by Roosevelt. Boy, Drew Willie, I'll tell you what, he, he shows as advertised 6'4, 214 pounds is the quarterback. And take a look at this very accurate on this quick little crossing route against the zone coverage. Boy, what a what an advantage to have a nice big tall quarterback looking over that line. McKillop, who led the nation in tackles per game last year, averaged over 12 a game. He made the hit there to stopping after a game of six. He had only six tackles last week, and there's a flag on the play. A play that's eh, going to be close to a first down, but let's see what the call is. Starks with the carry. Guy who had good yardage last week, 179 yards. He has four five speed. Picks up three on the play, but let's check the flag. I think there's an illegal procedure, yep. Somebody was moving there at the start. That uh, flag came out very, very early. Nick Define is our referee. It is a Mac crew for this game here in Pittsburgh. And I would think, Doug, that coming off the outstanding game that they had last week against UTEP, that this offense has to be pretty confident and pretty fired up. You know, I, Illegal I, formation, six men on the line of scrimmage, five-yard penalty remains second down. John, I wasn't shocked that they beat UTEP, but uh, what was totally shocking is the way that they beat them, 42 to 17, and they really could have scored more. They really eased off on them. Second down and nine following the penalty. 
Ball is on the pit side of the 50 yard line. Roosevelt in motion. Again dumps it over the middle. Loose ball. The Bulls scrambling for it. it's going to be called incomplete. Williams was there defensively for Pittsburgh. Popped the ball loose. It is an incomplete pass. Well, that's really the first uh, bad throw uh, tonight for Drew Willie. Uh, watch this. This is Ernest Jackson, number 21, coming across, double crossing route. He hits him on the back shoulder. And th that is a good way to throw an interception, but so he doesn't do that very often, as we already said. 250 now, five straight throws without an interception. An they, amazing streak. They have been excellent on third down. They have three wide receivers spread to the right, the near side boundary. Out of the shotgun, looking right, throwing right. The catch is made, and it's going to be a first down. Excellent job on third down. You saw the success ratio that they had last week. Hamlin made the catch. Well, it pit ran a, a blitz right into the sprint out. Uh, but I tell you, that was very, very well blocked. Very well blocked. And that was Brett Hamlin there advancing the football, made the safety miss, got the first down. Big play right there for the Bulls. Moves it inside the 45 to the 44. First and 10. Lilly has completed three for 28 yards already on this opening drive. Roosevelt and Jackson are the wideouts. One right, one left. Throwing left and throwing too far out of the reach that time of Roosevelt, number 18. There's been a favorite target. Chappelle was there defensively for Pitt. It'll be second down and 10 coming up. What do you like that you've seen so far? Watch this play. Yeah, that's a timing route, and, and uh, there was obvious mistake. Willie thought he was going outside, and he came inside. So that was an option route where they misread it. Well, the Panthers go to work defensively, second and 10 for Buffalo. Ball at the 34 yard line. We're just underway, 12 33 to play. Roosevelt, Jackson, both split to the left side. Starts, puts his head down, gets to the 30, and that's going to be about it. He'll pick up about four on the play. Williams made the tackle. And there's one thing about the Panthers, Doug, they're a little beat up. Murray and Gunn, who are their two starting linebackers, are out of action. That means Ransom and Williams will have to play today. Yeah, and uh, there you see it right there. That, uh, that was a good, just a power off tackle play. And of course, uh, you know, James Starks now, he, he can he can pack it up in there pretty good. Rice. Third and five. Rice and Hamlin now the wide receivers. They'll split three to the left side. Jackson as well. Passing formation. They've got five receivers in this formation. Three left, two right. Here comes some pressure. The throw, the catch is made. Short of a first down, it's Hamlin who makes the catch. Number 88 picking up his second reception here in the early going. Yeah, that was McKillop that made the tackle from inside out. That was a, just a, a, a old NFL style, just a quick little option route. Well, that's what McKillop does. He leads the team in tackles, and he did, was one of the best in the country last year. So the field goal team is on for Buffalo. A.J. Principe is the kicker. He is a sophomore. 15 of 20 last season. His long was 47. This one is going to be about 44 yards. Down. The kick is blocked. Scramble for the loose ball. So the Panthers stopped him right there. Well, that's pit ball regardless. And, uh, you know, that was what Dave Wanstead said last week. As bad as that loss was, uh, you know, against uh, Bowling Green, they blocked the extra point at the end. Of, look at the press. Oh, they blocked it right up the center. That was just great, great pressure uh, up front. That was Tommy Duhart, I think, that got his hand up right there. There it is right there. Number I think 51, you're right. Tommy Duhart. But Dave said that was very encouraging that late in the game that they blocked an extra point and gave them great effort. Well, the Panthers will have it for the first time. A little over 11 minutes left in the opening quarter of play here at Heinz Field out of the I formation. Play action face. We've got a man open and he misses him completely. McGee was the intended receiver. Number one and the ball was way over his head. So a missed throw that time by Stull to start the game. Well it's a tough throw going to his left and he didn't he didn't get his hips and shoulders turned around. That's a tough throw though for the young guy. See his career numbers, three touchdowns, one interception. He had a TD pass last week as Pitt built that early 14 to nothing lead. 
Three wide receivers left side and they'll start a man in motion. McCall down to the 35 yard line. He'll pick up six. Shannon made the tackle. It set the pit offense for the game tonight. Panthers, we showed you, led by Stahl, McCoy, Collins, Kinder, Turner, Byam. Byam the tight end. Pinkston, an excellent offensive lineman. Davis, Hauser, Belecki, and Thomas. Thomas is being pushed right now for playing time by a young man by the name of Lucas Nix, who they expect to see more playing time. Three wide receivers in this formation, man in motion. Looking right, throwing right, and the pass is complete for a first down. Turner made the catch. Cook made the tackle. 11 yards on the play. First down, Pittsburgh. Well, again, you know, this is one-on-one -on -one coverage out here. Take a look at Stahl. He looks to it right there, just throws the quick slant. Uh, excellent, excellent route by Kinder. And boy, what a good, good football player Derek Kinder is. Ball is at the 46-yard line now as the Panthers try to move into Buffalo territory for the first time tonight. We're inside 10 minutes to go. Collins and Baldwin in the ball game right now for Pittsburgh out of the I formation. Stoll looking down the right sideline. And it's too far. Incomplete. Cook was there on the coverage. Intended for Baldwin. Let's set the Bulls defense for you for tonight. Smith, Hilaire, Montanez, and Thompson are the men up front. Acabundo, Brewers, and Winters are the linebackers. And in the backfield is Cook, Shannon, Newton, and Josh Thompson. Well, you know, I'm talking to Matt Kaup, uh, Matt Cavanaugh, the offensive coordinator at Pitt. Uh, this young guy, you know, and I watched him in practice. He's got a lot of talent. He just got to play and get more experience and just settle down. Empty backfield as they dump it out into the flat, and that's going to go incomplete. Intended for LaShawn McCoy. Yeah, and that's an example of that right there. You know, he, he just starting the game, he's probably a little bit too amped up. You see the high throw right here. Uh, you know, he could make that throw 99 out of 100 times in practice, and he's just a little bit too amped up. He's got to settle down a little bit. There you see Coach talking to Tony Wise, the offensive line coach. Last week, six of 16 on third down. Panthers had the ball a lot. They had their chances last week. They just could not get the job done. Out of the shotgun, waits, waits too long. The ball is loose. That is a loose ball. Buffalo tries to pick it up, and in the process, I think they might have given it back to Pittsburgh right there. Instead of falling on it, he tried to pick it up, and somehow the Panthers are going to survive a big turnover right there. Well, Stoll was very, very lucky right here. Take a look at it because it's a full blitz. He's holding on to the football too long. And again, a little breakdown of protection, but still, he's got to recognize blitz and get rid of the football. Now, Pinkston recovered it. The sack was performed by 92. That's Robinson who got the, the sack. The previous play is under review. They're reviewing the previous play. Yeah, I, I don't think his arm was uh, going forward at all. I think they had to call correct on the field. Let's see what the replay book says. But, you know, the quarterback, he has to recognize that. That was full blitz. He's got to get the football. He's got to have that clock in his head. Take, take a look. I... Uh, the, the question is going to be, did he throw the football and did it slip out of his hand? I still think you're right, Doug. I think that was probably a fumble. Yeah, I don't think this, this, this angle will tell us, was the arm going forward? Yeah, no, it was, he, but he held on to the but ball. But you know what? He, he was not going to throw it. He held on to the football. He was in, in the, the act of bringing the ball back into his body. I, I think they had it right on the field. I think that's a fumble. But again, the Bulls tried to pick the ball up and run with it. And as a, as a result, they do not have the football now. Of course, in last week, three fumbles last week. I mean, that was the difference in the game. Let's take a look at this angle. Yeah, he definitely pulled the ball back down. That's a fumble all the way. And the play is still being reviewed. Brightus will do the punting. Naaman Roosevelt is deep. Of course, you see uh, Bill Stoll on the phone with the uh, offensive coordinator, Matt Cavanaugh, who calls the game from the press box of course Matt Cavanaugh former uh, you know great 
Pitt Panther national championship as a quarterback here. Uh, former, you know, what, 12 year quarterback in the NFL, offensive coordinator in the NFL. Very, very experienced. It's got to be frustrating for him to see his young quarterback making these kinds of mistakes. Well, I'll tell you one thing, too, Doug. The columnists, the newspapers, were really hard <laughs> on Pittsburgh this week. I mean, they, they were all over them after that loss last week to Bowling Green. Now, I know it's been a very, very, very tough week. After review, After review. the play stands, has called on the field. Fourth down. Fourth down. Nice job by the replay booth. It didn't take long at all, and that was a pretty obvious call. Yeah, to, to us it certainly was. Roosevelt will be the deep man on the punt return. Shaky start for Bill Stahl again. They have to get him going, and they have to get McCoy going. They're very fortunate that that was not a turnover on that play. Left footed kicker and that's a good one. Roosevelt will field it back at his 23 yard line. Gets across the 25 to the 26. And that's where the Bulls will have it when we come back. 853 remaining in the opening quarter. 43 yard punt. Four yard return. No score in Pittsburgh. You're up. Nah, you go ahead. All right. Impressive. Where'd you learn that? Some fancy golf school. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? What are you, taking lessons? Come on, what's your secret? You got your own pro? Yep, got a bunch of them. The key to better golf is the best instruction, and Golf Digest is the only place you can learn from the game's hottest pros. Ernie Els, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods. Call today, and for just $14.97, you'll get 12 issues of Golf Digest with easy-to-follow techniques, equipment reviews, pocket tips, and much more. Subscribe now, and you'll get this DVD free. Renowned instructor Jim McLean demonstrates practice plans that will help improve your game. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, own your own. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. Own a timeshare? Turn it into cash. No more mortgage payments. Thank you, timeshares only. At timeshares only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. Call timeshares only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. Over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now can be the best time to sell. Call 800-366-1637. That's 800-366-1637. At Barron's, we find investing opportunities that the crowd missed and give you investing ideas and insights that can help your portfolio grow. Subscribe now and you'll receive eight weeks of Barron's plus Barron's Online with access to daily columns, market analysis, and tools like our Stock Screener and Market Lab, all for only $19.95. Call now, 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600 for Barron's. Tune in to SNY for Jets Post Game Live. In depth analysis, player reaction, and expert opinion immediately after every Jets game. Jets Post Game Live, only on SNY. Get to New York Sports here. SNY.TV, the latest info and great features with original content, exclusive interviews, game highlights, and the best insider info. SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. Welcome back to the north side of Pittsburgh. No score between the Bulls and the Panthers. 8.53 remaining. Stakas and Duncan are in there right now on that defensive line for the Panthers of Dave Wanstatt. Still trying to get an offense going, Doug. They haven't been consistent in either game. Well, not at all. And that's not been a good start offensively at all for Stahl. Side that time and pick up some yardage as Stocks or Stark, excuse me, and he will pick up about five. Not bad. Thatcher and Barry teamed up on the tackle for Pittsburgh. Let's take a look at the blocking now. This is just a power play. It, just, it bounces outside. Nice block by the wide out. Nice block by the tight end. And I'll tell you, number uh, 28, Thatcher, that's a good, good fill by the safety. The ball was on the safety. Safety had to make the play. Bray is in there now as the running back. Receiver left one right. Willie hands to the deep man, and he's going to get a couple. 
Up to about the 35, giving three on the play. Starks picks up three. This is an impressive offensive team. It really is. Uh, you be a uh, tell you what now. Penetration on defense. That's what uh, really stops running plays. That was Rashad Duncan, number 50. They got the great, great penetration. The notch third and short for the university. Buffalo has the ball. They're one of two on third down. Romeus, Mistakus, Williams, and Sheard are the up men for the Panthers, trying to stop it on short yardage. And it's going to be very close. Depends on the spot by the officials. That was Sharon, the fullback. He's only had uh, <laughs> he's only had three carries for two yards. Well, that's all he needed was two yards there. <laughs> and he got it. He doubled his career rushing right there. <laughs> <laughs> Picks up the first down. The ball spotted at the 38 yard line of the University at Buffalo, as it is officially known. Good push by the offensive line and an excellent effort run by Chris Sharon, the fullback. Well, first and 10 now for the Bulls. They've dominated time of possession so far. Nice cutback move across the 45 yard line out to near the 47 yard line. That was Starks again, number 19, and he'll pick up nine on the play. Well, this was made a blitz the from the wide side of the field, and uh, they, uh, Turner Gill really caught him in the right defense on that call. They ran away from the blitz. A nice cut right here by Starks. Boy, you, you can see, you can see how he's averaged 5.8 a carry last week. Sharon now is the fullback. Starks is the tailback. 6 2 2 11 is James Starks. He had a terrific week. The only thing was that his quarterback, Willie, was a little better in throwing four touchdown passes. Starks for the first down has got it and more. And the fire is way near the 45 of Pitts. Pick up nine on the play. Well, nice block by Sharon, the fullback. That was a great block by the 237 pound fullback, and that certainly is what sprung James Starks right there. McKillop and Thatcher made the tackle. Roosevelt and Hamlin are the wideouts in this formation. Starks five carries, 31 yards so far, both wide receivers to the near side of the field. The near boundary on first and 10. Starks looking for room. Slipped just a little bit. Going to be ridden out of bounds inside the 40 at the 39 by Thatcher. But it looked like he really didn't have his footing when he took the football. That no, he, he was uh, he slipped a little bit right at the start. Take a look at it. Right there, there was just a little stutter slip right there. And again, uh, Thatcher, the safety, had to come up and make the tackle. Not a good sign for the pit defense. You know, Doug, that can be embarrassing, too. You're out there all by yourself and you fall down. He didn't fall down, but he came pretty close to it. Especially on this field. You can't say the turf monster got you. This That's is grass. Thermalus is in there. He had over 100 yards last week. Sharon is still the fullback. Rolling left, quick toss, first down. Passes complete that time to Jackson. Ezekiel uh, ran him out of bounds, but it's another first down for Buffalo, and the Bulls are moving the ball. They picked up 11 on that play. Well, Drew Willie, take a look at him on the sprint out right here. Nice job of getting his shoulders and hips turned. Makes a very accurate throw. Wow, that's good timing. You can see why. Uh, you can see how Buffalo scored 42 points against Texas El Paso last week. They are very, very well coached. They got a great quarterback and they got a great running back. Ray is in the ball game right now at the fullback position. Over the middle, almost cut for a touchdown. Just a little bit incomplete. Jesse Rack, the tight end, was the intended receiver. Just out of his reach, and that was a pretty good throw. It was, and that was one-on-one -on -one coverage by the strong safety, uh, DeSico. And one-on-one, -on -one, take a look at it right here. He puts the ball up, gives it some air. It's a nice job. It was a good recovery by Don DeSico. Take a look at it right here. One-on-one -on -one coverage against the tight end. He came a long way to recover and make that play. I really think Willie, if he was throwing the ball on a line right there, he might have had it. But Ezekiel did recover to knock it away, so it's second down and ten. Ball inside the 30th, the 27-yard line of Pitt. Willie looks, throws, caught, 
and inside the 20 yard line that time. Catch is made by Jackson. And again, right up there defensively was DeSicchio. And I tell you what, Willie's not afraid to spread the wealth, is he? Oh, it, it, he spreads the ball all over the field. Picked up nine on that play. Wow. You know, nice I, catch. I, I am very, very impressed. First time I've seen Willie live. Wow. You know, and he started slow, and he's just gotten better and better and better every single year. The senior, 6'4", 14, he's on the Johnny Unitas list. He's the captain out of Randolph, New Jersey. Counting down to four minutes left in the opening quarter. Tenth play of the drive, and it starts straight ahead. He's not going to get much. Stacked up right in the middle of the line. Ransom, one of the linebackers, is there. Little gain, if any. Yeah, Austin Ransom, in interesting story. He played safety in the spring. He was a wide receiver uh, going into training camp, and they moved him to linebacker, and now he's a starter. Along with Doug Graber, I'm John Sanders. We're at Heinz Field in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. First quarter winding down, 3.55 to play. Neither team has scored, although you have to be honest about it uh, that the Bulls of Buffalo pretty much dominated the first quarter. Totally dominated the first quarter. No question about that. We got a measurement coming here. There on your left is Turner Gill. How unusual is it? And I, I know it's not totally unusual, but for a head coach to also be the offensive coordinator, Doug, and call the play. Well, it's tough. I think it's very, very tough. Probably easier for Turner Gill because, you know, he was a quarterback. You know, he, he coached quarterbacks. He's coached offense his whole life. There you see Coach Wanstead. There's Turner Gill. Man, what a job he has done at Buffalo. Incredible. I mean, this program was a laughing stock, really, when he started there three years ago. And uh, I'll tell you what, buddy, you better take this team serious. Mid American Coach of the Year last year. And they'll stack it up in the power formation on fourth down and very short yardage. You have to think the quarterback's going to keep it. He will fall forward. Does he have enough? Depends on the spot. I would think he does. Yeah, I think he did. That was a pretty good push. Yep, first down. Pretty good push by the center. Of that that's an interesting formation for it short is. yardage too. And you know that those two big backs are in there. You know they're 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 just there to push the line. To, to, and, and that's exactly the way it worked out. It was an interesting formation. It looked like they had 17 guys lined up right around and, the center. And look at Sharon right there. Just push the pile. That's all he's doing. I tell you, that's very innovative. I like that. Ball is inside the 20 at the 17 for first down. It's Roosevelt. Rice and Jackson the wide receivers they have five wide outs in this formation. Willie dumps it over the middle and it's deflected incomplete second down coming up. McKellop was right there. Yeah, that ball should have been caught that that was uh, might have been a little bit of a short arm on that one because McKellop was waiting for him at 240 pounds. I, I understand. Take a look at it right here. Hamlin was the intended receiver and you see it just wow. bounces off of his shoulders and goes incomplete. <laughs> It didn't stop him from taking a lick, though, did it? No, I, you might as well catch it. You're going to get hit one way or the other. And man, the killer, 240 pound backer. If I was a wide receiver, I think I'd know where he was as well. <laughs> in the red zone last week for Buffalo, three touchdowns in four possessions. There's a short pass to Starks inside. He'll spin his way down to the 10 yard line. Excuse me, it's Roosevelt. Duhart made the tackle. Roosevelt made the catch number 18 seven yard pickup and the Bulls continue to move the football. Yeah that's just that that little wide receiver screen over the center. A lot of people call this the the jailhouse break screen offensive line releases got about uh, five yards on it. If, remember now this team has been very very efficient in the red zone led the Mid-American Conference last year. Really they were three for three last week in the red zone. Five wide outs in this formation, empty backfield. Willie will take the snap. Panthers show blitz. Here they come. Dumps it out. First down. Not quite into the end zone. Hamlin made the catch, fought his way down to the goal line. They'll pick up nine on the play, and it'll be first down and goal for the Bulls. Boy, Willie is so poised. He saw the blitz coming. He, he got rid of the ball right away, right on time, accurate. Let him make a move right here. It's funny. His feet and hips ended up in the end zone, but the ball did not. Good call by the officials. Spun him down just short of the goal line, so first and goal.
for a touchdown, a one yard run, and they are in. Carrying it in was Thermalus, number 27, gets the touchdown. He scored two touchdowns last week against UTEP. He gets his third of the season here on the short run. And it is Buffalo striking first here in Pittsburgh. A no. dominating drive. Way, they way really controlled easy. the ball. They, both, the tight ends doubled down. They kicked out with the fullback. That was way too easy. Terrific job by the Bulls offense. Principe will be the kicker. Hamlin is the holder. He's a wide receiver. And it is Buffalo striking first. Last week, Pittsburgh built a 14 to nothing lead. And he kicks that one right into the pile. That had no chance at all. So it will be 6 nothing. The Buffalo Bulls on top of the Pitt Panthers when we come back. We're at Heinz Field in downtown Pittsburgh, PA. The MAC Conference Bulls have the lead over the Big East Panthers. Pay another mortgage payment or maintenance fee on your timeshare. Turn it into cash. Call timeshares only. We got rid of those maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only, for making it so easy. At timeshares only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. No more mortgage payments, no more maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only. Call timeshares only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. Our thousands of satisfied customers have made us the largest resale marketplace in the world. Call timeshares only now. Your free information kit with our 10 secrets on selling your timeshares waiting. The over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now could be the best time to sell. Call timeshares only today. Thank us tomorrow. Call timeshares only now and get your free information kit. Turn your timeshare into cash and never pay another mortgage payment, maintenance fee, or tax bill again. Don't wait. Call now. Call 800-314-0762. That's 800-314-0762. Call 800-314-0762 now. Time? Who has time? News 12 Long Island. It's there for me 24-7. I rely on it every day. Local traffic, local weather, local news. My brother was featured on News 12 and everybody in the neighborhood saw it. I want Long Island news from people who live right here on Long Island. There was a gas leak in my neighborhood. News 12 was all over it. Nobody else paid attention to that one. You just can't get this anywhere else. <laughs> news 12 Long Island. Only on Cablevision, not on phone company TV or anywhere else. How was school? Great. A guy split his pants. Hit the books. Good luck on your paper. She's announcing her candidacy for class president today. Not in that she's not. And show your team spirit. It's back to school with the Camdens. Catch 7th Heaven weekday afternoons at 1 on Hallmark Channel. 7th Heaven on Hallmark Channel is brought to you in part by Raymore and Flanagan Furniture. Welcome back. Here is the missed extra point. And this is how not to kick an extra point. Yeah, and again, that penetration and the kicker was really late on that one. That was, you know what? And, and here you see Turner Gill's reaction. Well, he liked that a bit. It, but it was a heck of a drive. 15 plays. They took six minutes and 54 seconds off the clock. And so the Panthers are going to get the football back. And keep in mind, they have not scored since the first half of the game last week. They really struggled. Andre Wright on the return. Cuts it back at the 25. He's going to get outside the 30 to almost the 35 yard line before he is dropped. It's 150 remaining to be played in the opening quarter. 25 yard return. Panthers will have decent field position when we come back to Pittsburgh. Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual Insurance. A gold glove, an all-star, and the 86 series. You might say I'm the whole package. And Sovereign's got the whole package, too. The small business package has everything to run your business. From checking with 300 free transactions a month to loans and credit card services. So Sovereign's got it all together. Sort of like me. 
Welcome Sovereign. Never before has the gecko been captured on film talking about RV insurance. So, you guys travel a lot. You should check out Geico and get a free rate quote on RV insurance. This is truly history in the making. You can also get a rate quote on motorcycle insurance, ATV insurance, personal watercraft insurance. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm up here. Geico, saving you money on insurance for your car and the other stuff that moves you. Geico Sports Night on SNY. New York sports covered from every angle, every day. Host Gary Eppel and Kirk Jimenez. Connect fans to the latest sports news with live reports. I think we'll really see what he's made of tonight. Highlight. Score! The Mets win it! And debate. Yes, he deserves to play. Plus, insider information and analysis. I think that's the key. From a crew in the know and on top of their game. Geico Sports Night. Every night at 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. Only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. They missed the extra point, but the Bulls have the lead, and it's been at least almost 45 minutes since the Panthers have scored a point. Yeah, that's really kind of a surprising uh, play selection thus far. And, and actually, it's only one rush because the fumble on, on the, you know, when Stahl was fumbled, that went down as a rush. But they've really only run the ball one time. Well, here's number two. And a good job defensively by the Bulls. To cut him down. That's LaShawn McCoy who was there. Akabudu made the tackle. Akabando, uh, rather. They have got to get McCoy going. And, and of course, he had no chance there. And, and this defensive front for Buffalo is pretty stout now. I mean, they, they, they're big up front and they're strong and they're tough. And uh, offensive coordinator Matt, Calvin, Matt Kavanaugh, he was concerned with this front. Three wide receivers to the right side of this formation for Pittsburgh. And dumps it off after receiving some pressure. And uh, he ran a lot laterally. McCoy made the catch. Akabundu made the tackle. He ran farther laterally than he did downfield. Well, he, he did, you know, and of course uh, he can make people miss, and a great back like this has a lot of confidence in his ability to cut it back, but that uh, pursuit's going to get him every time. Uh, obviously, uh, going north and south is the best way to move it down the field. Akabunda was the one who was pressuring quarterback Stull on that play, and he just did get the pass off out of the backfield. Big third down for Stull. Big third down. Blitz. He sets up the screen wow. and they had that one figured out and a flag goes down. Well, and, and again it was a full blitz. They were man to man. They were in the right defense for a screen. Yeah it's on the defense that's for sure. Yeah. Newton was the man who applied the helmet it, to it, the pit running back LaShawn McCoy. And they're going to suffer for that. And you could hear that contact up here. I mean, that was definitely helmet to helmet. You could hear it all the way up here in the press box. And, uh, you know, that's the correct interpretation of that rule. You hate to see an aggressive play penalized. But, uh, boy, it's so important with all the concussion issues that we have now to try and avoid that helmet to helmet contact. That's unfortunate for Buffalo. The penalty puts it inside the 50 at the Buffalo 48 yard line, where Stull will go to work. Kinder and McGee split out to the right. McCoy. A little room this time and then trips up just as he got close to the 40 yard line. Yeah, that was Sherrard Lott uh, that was able to just trip him up. But boy, he was close to breaking this. Take a look at it now. Just a little straight uh, sprint draw. Watch number 22 come in right there and just, just trip him up. Hang on to the football, Mr. Uh, McCoy. That, that ground caused that fumble, but still, you know, after last week. So we have completed one quarter of play here at Heinz Field on the north side of the city of Pittsburgh. And from the MAC Conference, it's the Bulls of Buffalo leading the Panthers of Pittsburgh in the Big East. College football from downtown Pittsburgh, 6 0 after the first 15. You're up. Nah, you go ahead. All right. Impressive. Where'd you learn that? Some fancy golf school. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? 
What are you, taking lessons? Come on, what's your secret? You got your own pro? Yep, got a bunch of them. The key to better golf is the best instruction, and Golf Digest is the only place you can learn from the game's hottest pros. Ernie Els, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods. Call today, and for just $14.97, you'll get 12 issues of Golf Digest with easy-to-follow techniques, equipment reviews, pocket tips, and much more. Subscribe now, and you'll get this DVD free. Renowned instructor Jim McLean demonstrates practice plans that will help improve your game. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. Tired of getting last week's burnt mess on this week's dinner? Hi, Steve Barkey, Mr. Do-It-Yourself here. Does this charred mess look familiar? Why spend hundreds on a grill that you can never seem to keep clean? Well, this is Grill Daddy, the revolutionary new grill cleaning tool. The fastest, easiest way to keep your grill clean and your food-tasting backyard barbecue great. With one quick turn of the valve, the Grill Daddy releases a stream of water that steam cleans that cooked on, charred on, mess away in seconds. And it sterilizes too. Just preheat, brush, rinse, and sterilize. It's that easy. Grill Daddy leaves your grill spotless and sanitary with no chemicals and no hard work. Use it on stainless steel grills, ceramic grills, iron grills. Grill Daddy keeps them all looking like new. And no more black residue on your grilled food. The stainless steel brush heads are removable, replaceable, and dishwasher safe. And it's the last grill cleaning tool you'll ever need. Nothing cleans like a Grill Daddy. So why spend a fortune on a grill that you can't seem to keep clean when you can get the Grill Daddy? You can get your Grill Daddy today for only $14.99. When you call, ask about our Grill Daddy Pro. It's perfect for all your grilling needs, and it makes a great gift. Order right now, and I'll include my Grill Perfect reusable, color-changing beef thermometer free. Just pay shipping and processing. Never have to guess again. In just three seconds, the color tells you whether it's rare, medium, or well. It's the perfect barbecue companion and is available for chicken and fish. Call now and find out how to get free replacement brush heads for life. Here's how to order. To order your Grill Daddy, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-718-2658. That's 1-800-718-2658. Call now to find out how you can get free brush heads for life. So call 1-800-718-2658 and order today. Six nothing is our score, and as you might expect, the first quarter stats dominated by the Bulls of Buffalo. Look at that. 23 plays to 10. Had the ball for almost 11 minutes. Wow. This is just the second play for Pittsburgh inside Buffalo's territory. The Bulls had 16 plays inside Pittsburgh territory. That pass in the flat is complete. He makes the catch and goes out of bounds near the 35 yard line. Dominic Cook, number 25, ran him out. He'll pick up nine on the play. Well, you know, I, I like the call because I'll tell you what, to me, the key right now, you've got to get Bull, Bill Stoll settled down. He's got to settle. Look here, they had a mistaken protection, protection there. He almost got it from the blind side. But Stoll has got to settle down and start making some of the easy throws. And he picks up the first as they advance the football to the 33 yard line. Collins and McGee split to the left side. Play action fake, rolling out a stall. The pass is caught. Is he inbounds? That's the question. They say he was. Boy, Kinder did a great job of getting his feet down inbounds. Uh, he, he really showed his athleticism right here. Take a look at it. Let's see if he did get him inbounds. He stepped. Yeah, he's in bounds right there. That is a great job by Kinder. But, you know, I think they missed it because I thought he stepped out of bounds before the ball got there and that would right there that would have made that play not count had he stepped out of bounds and come back and you know what this this if this is being reviewed is under review yep I, I bet this will come back the, the the question is did that left foot get out of bounds before the ball got there I thought it did watch from this angle as stall rolls there's the pass you can't see his feet in that angle the Bulls thought it was out of bounds you see what the Replay officials decide. 
But you know, unfortunately for Bill Stahl, he missed McGee, number one, was wide open coming across the field. That's really where the ball should have gone. Wide open coming across the field. He didn't see it. Be interesting what the replay officials come up with here. He definitely caught the football. He definitely had his feet in bounds. Yeah, you're thinking though is that he stepped out before he before. caught the football. Absolutely. I thought he definitely stepped out before the foot was uh, I thought just by an inch over that line. We'll see if they happen to spot that. <laughs> it depends on the angle, I guess, Doug, that you yeah. have to look at the play. That's Both teams a, will wait now for a while. That's David Walker, the running back coach there talking. To Bill Stoll. Boy, David Walker was a great back himself. I saw enough of him when I was at Rutgers, and he was uh, running. He was uh, running the football for Syracuse. What has happened to Syracuse, huh? It's Boy, that's not the same. That is, is uh, absolutely shocking. Uh, what's happened in the last uh, ten years with that program? Boy, you know, Dave wants that. You see on the right there. You know, he's had to three great recruiting classes. Here comes the call. After review, the play stands. As called on the field, a pretty catch. First down. Well, well, I don't think they saw what you saw. No, I don't think they did either. It definitely was a completed catch. I agree with that. But just a little bit before that, there was another issue. Ball is spotted now at the 18. It'll be first down and 10. Right there. That left foot, I thought, might have gone uh, out of bounds. Close. Well, this is a chance for the Panthers now. This is as close as they've been in a while. Remember, this team has gone three consecutive quarters without scoring. They need something good to happen bad. Again, a short pass. The pass is caught. Inside the five is the tight end, Nate Byam. Byam's going to make it a first and goal for Pitt. They're going to spot it near the four yard line, maybe the three. Really a good effort by the big guy advancing this football. Very good effort. Take a look at this. Just a simple little three step read. That's okay. called an arrow straight route. Nice job. He did step out there. Uh, yeah, they got the, that. That was the correct spot. No question. I am caught five last week for 52 yards. That is his first catch tonight. And Sean moves it into the end zone. Collins gets it in there. They had a tackle eligible on that play. It's going to be a three yard touchdown run for McCoy. And McCoy will score the touchdown for McCoy, his second touchdown of the season. Boy, take a look at this. He sets it up like he's going to bounce it outside, sets it up, and then cuts it back in and runs right over the safety. Excellent run by McCoy. And a good block by his right guard that time. Malecki leading the way. So McCoy gets into the end zone. The Panthers will try to tack on the extra point and take the lead, which they will do. Good kick by Connor Lee. And just like that, it's the Panthers seven and the Bulls of Buffalo six. So Pittsburgh ends a scoreless drought of over 45 minutes. They take the lead here at home, seven to six over the Bulls. At Barron's, we find investing opportunities that the crowd missed and give you investing ideas and insights that can help your portfolio grow. Subscribe now and you'll receive eight weeks of Barron's plus Barron's Online with access to daily columns, market analysis, and tools like our Stock Screener and Market Lab, all for only $19.95. Call now, 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600 for Barron's. SNY, the new TV home of the Big East, with more than 125 Big East football and basketball games. Exclusive coverage of Rutgers football and in-depth programming to keep you on top of your favorite Big East team. SNY, the new TV home of the Big East. Tune in to SNY for Jets Open Mic, presented by Motorola. Full coverage of Coach Mangini's press conference every Monday and Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. 
Today, history is being made as we release the government-authorized Liberian legal tender September 11th commemorative. It's a $20 coin certificate. It's giant 3 and 1 8 inches by 7 and 3 8 inches size dwarfs every U.S. legal tender note currently in circulation. And it's actually struck in .999 pure silver leaf. Another historic first. This coin certificate displays a standard $20 denomination on one side, but on the other side, it's the first time ever that two separate numbers have been used to add up to the full $20 face value. It uses 9 and 11 to commemorate the 7th anniversary of the World Trade Center tragedy. The final issue price was to be set at $39, but now it can be yours for face value, just $20. Strict limit of 5 per caller, satisfaction guaranteed. Call now. To order, call 1-800-811-8303. That's 1-800-811-8303. Limit of 5 per caller at 1-800-811-8303. Order now. See the back pages in a whole new life as Chris Cotter. It doesn't like great right. pictures that are growing on trees. And Joe Beningo. Who's kidding who? Deliver the hottest New York sports topics on Daily News Live, presented by City, weekdays at 5, only on SNY. News, opinion, debate. Get the inside scoop on all things New York sports. Catch Brian Custer, Brandon Tierney, and Scott Farrell on The Wheelhouse. Weeknights at 5.30, only on SNY. We are back. 7-6. to six. The Panthers have taken the lead. Thanks to the extra points. 78 consecutive now for Lee. That is a school record. Handling the kickoff chores here will be number 24 for the Panthers. And deep, of course, is Roosevelt. Luke Briggs on the kickoff. Roosevelt at the 10. And down he goes at the 12-yard line. He was looking for some place to go, Doug, and there wasn't any place there. Well, you know, you kind of sense the frustration with this Pitt football team uh, and the problems they've had in the last uh, really four quarters. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's like the pressure's off. That was great coverage on that kickoff. I mean, they were flying down the field. And it'll be at the 13 yard line. Well, let's see what the Bulls can do as they got themselves in a hole now. First down and 10. They really have dominated time of possession. The lone setback is Starks. Willie pumps, looks, and he's going to run. And he slides down outside the 15 at the 16 yard line. Picks up three yards on the play. Well, it's, they went after Aaron Berry right there. The left corner and, and watch they, they run a little pump and go here and try to beat him deep and he was right with it step for step. Nice job by Barry. And a good job that time by McKillop who instead of drilling him when he was on the on the turf decided to jump over him because he was already down. So it'll be second down and seven. Clock moving just inside 13 minutes to play in the opening half. No place to go that time. McKillop is there to make the tackle on Starks, and there was simply no room. He's going to lose a yard, maybe two. You know, you, you just take a look at it right here. You just kind of get the feeling, boy, this, what a great push up front. You just kind of get the feeling there was a lot of pressure on this team with the 25th national ranking, and, and then they, they kind of laid an egg last week. And, and now it's almost like the pressure's off and they're starting to play ball. Now so far the Bulls are three of five on third down, but this is a third down and long. Third and about eight. Out of the shotgun. Willie fires it complete. And that's going to be enough for a first down. The catch was made by Rack, the tight end, number 82. He'll pick up 10 on the play, and that's enough for a first down. They continue to move the chains and certainly giving Willie Doug enough time to yeah, throw. Great protection, and, and Ransom had a man for man coming across the field, and uh, he just he, he just wasn't up to the task. And that's the toughest route to cover man to man on those crossing routes. It was Ransom first, then Thatcher to finish off the tackle. Clock continues to move. You see the, the play clock is down inside 10. Starts. Tries the left side, cuts it back. And he spun down and still fighting his way across the 30. And look wow. at this. Wow. That's going to be a first down. 
McCullough was the first to hit him. But they could not bring Starks down and he moved the pile for a total of 14 yards and a first down. You know that should have been about a five yard game. Doug. Yep. It turned out to be 14. Uh, that's just a great effort by Starks made a spin move and just kept on a truck. Keep those legs moving late flag late flag that came in. Following the play we have a dead ball personal foul on the offense a 15 yard penalty it'll be first down 10 yards to go. Well, that's going to back up the Bulls after the play was over. Let's see if we can see the penalty right here. Take a look at here. Look at the spin move right there by Starks. Wow, good balance. Somebody came in late. Yeah, what? Let's see if we can catch it right here. Just keep your eye on 79. He comes in here real late to the pile. 75. Yeah. He grabbed his back and threw him forwards. That was Niedemeyer. One of their best offensive linemen. First down and 10 inside handoff. Dropped it to 25 yard line that time. Sheard made the tackle. Just a yard on the play. We're at Heinz Field on the north side of Pittsburgh. I'm John Sanders along with Doug Graber. Starks now 10 carries 51 yards. Remember he had 179 yards last week. And we are still early in the second quarter. Roosevelt split wide right. Willie dumps it off. Catch is made. It's going to be well short of the first down though. Again it was Starks who made the catch. But not much there. Give him three on the play. Well, I'd say Willie has been uh, very, very impressive. Watch him make a little jump throw here, right there. He knew that he had Starks on a late check down coming out. That was, he is very, very accurate. You know, if any time you're not accurate, these balls get tipped, they get intercepted. Four six tonight. And well, that's how you go that downs. many passes, Doug, without an interception. Yep. He just doesn't throw interceptions. Third and long, waits, waits. Bumped by his own man, and down he goes at the 24 yard line. Nothing opened up that time. Barry and Sheard were in defensively for the Panthers, who are going to force a punt by Buffalo. Well, that time defensive coordinator Phil Bennett came with a three man rush and just had everybody covered down the field. No place to go. They stayed after him. And that actually ends up as a sack. That was behind the line of scrimmage. Well, this is the first punt by the Bulls. Barden will do the kicking. And you see back deep to receive for the Panthers is Aaron Barry, number 17. Pitt should have decent field position depending on what happens. Kind of a wobbly kick. He's going to run away from it and let it bounce, and it's going to take a Buffalo wow. bounce. And it's kicked inside the 25 yard line to the 23, a 49 yard punt. That's going to negate what we thought, Doug, would be pretty good field position for Pitt. Sure does. But, but the Panthers will have the ball with a one point lead. 8.50 remaining here in the opening half from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Panthers 7, Bulls 6. <laughs> Ever since I won the Win for Life Instant Game from the New York Lottery, I've been taking much better care of myself. Hey, as long as I keep living, they'll keep paying. Right, Stan? Another million this year, sir. Better ingredients, better pizza, more choices. With Papa John's 14 unique taste creations on our specialty menu, specialties are our specialty. Like the Italian Meats Trio, the Sicilian Classic, and the Chicken Bacon Ranch. Get a large specialty pizza, just $12.99 each. 14 unique tastes, all at one place. Call or click PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's.
Geico Sports Night on SNY. New York sports covered from every angle, every day. Host Gary Apple and Kirk Jimenez. Connect fans to the latest sports news. Geico Sports Night, every night at 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. Only on SNY. SNY, the new Tiki home of the Big East, with more than 125 Big East football and basketball games. Exclusive coverage of Rutgers football and in-depth programming to keep you on top of your favorite Big East team. SNY, the new TV home of the Big East. Pitt Panthers and the Buffalo Bulls matched up here with 8.50 to play here in the second quarter. Panthers will take the field. Stevens Howling now is in there as the lone setback for the Panthers, picking up for LaShawn McCoy. McCoy five carries, 19 yards. Play action, stall. Sets, has plenty of time, throws to the far sideline, and the catch is made. Knocked out of bounds is Porter. Thomas got to him, but before he not before he picked up 14 yards. That is an NFL play right there. You know, that's a deep comeback off the play action. Take a look at it right here. And this this is exactly what McCoy needed to do. Hopefully that'll get him going a little bit now. He made a nice throw down the field. Excellent timing. Uh, this guy, I watched him throw in practice. I mean, he, this guy has got, he's got a lot of talent. He just needs to settle down and slow the game down a little bit. He has completed his last four, including that one for 14 yards. Stevens Howling gets to the sideline. Going to come up a little short. He'll get to about the 48-yard line before Akabundo drops him there. What a great changeup at running back. Uh, Howling's is so quick. Just watch this little burst right here. Sets it up, and again, look at that burst down the sideline. And Howlings is not that big either. You look at him, he's only 5'7", 180 pounds from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. But that seems to be a trend in running backs in college football, the smaller running backs, 5'8", 5 5'9". 5 well, you know, he, he's 5'7", but I'll tell you, he's 180. He's put together. It's going to be a first-down catch. Run out of bounds on the play. Was Porter. He'll pick up three yards, and that's enough for a Panther first down. And this offense now, Doug, is beginning to show a little rhythm and a little consistency. Just watching the body language of this whole football team on the sideline, when McCoy stuck it in the end zone, it was like the pressure was off, and now they're starting to play ball. I saw it on defense. I saw it on their kickoff coverage. Now you're seeing a stall starting to settle down at quarterback and make some really good throws. Well, you remember Wanstat telling us in our meeting the other day that he thinks this is still a good football team. Just give them a little bit of time. That'll be another first down. Once again, it's Porter hit by Newton, but not before he picks up 14 more yards. And the Panthers really, the offense beginning to take control of the game. Well, you know, take a look at it again. Play action against the Blitz. Nice job stepping up into the pocket, making a very accurate throw. Uh, the blitz was well picked up. There's the crossing routes. Those are the hard ones to cover. If he'd have hit him on the front shoulder, he might have had a chance to really go a bunch after that catch. He does get it down to the 34-yard line of Buffalo. With just over seven minutes to play here in the opening half. Here comes the reverse. And good yardage again. Be just short of the first down. Stevens Howling. LaRod Stevens howling finally tacked by tackled by Devontae Shannon but another good game boy he's fun to watch in the open field he really is he's exciting and when he made that cut he really had a burst take a look at it right here watch right here he, see he sees it right there and there's the burst up the field and a nice little cut back it's in close to a first down it'll be second and short out of the I formation now. Collins the fullback and there's a quick out on the far side and it's incomplete it was intended for Turner and he could not hang on well that's not a good throw that you know that that throw you have to put right on the front number and he really it forced the Turner to make a very difficult catch in the open field just a three step drop again he's got to hit 99 out of 100 here not a good throw really no chance for Turner to make the catch nope. on the play be third and short. 
McGee goes far left side. They'll work out of the eye formation. Short yardage, maybe a running play right here. It is. Stevens Howling has a first down as he spins inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line. He runs into a group of bulls. He'll pick up six and the first down as we wind down to six minutes remaining in this opening half of play. Take a look at it here now. This is just the power play. Wow. What a whole. And, and you know, this offensive line is very athletic. I was very impressed with them on tape. That was John Malecki that pulled the uh, right guard. Uh, no, uh, Pinkston 77, the left tackle. I was very impressed with him. This is a pretty good offensive line. Two receivers both split to the left side. A little bit of a delay to Stevens Howling, and he'll go down at the 20 yard line. Akabundu made the tackle. Nothing there. Akabunda is an interesting guy. He's a transfer out of Iowa Wesleyan, a walk on. And you know, Turner Gill being a take a look at uh, Akabunda make the play right here. And of course, you know, Turner Gill being a, a Nebraska guy, that famous walk on program. But Jimmy Williams, their defensive coordinator, was a walk on who became a first round draft choice. They have walk ons all over the place. They really do. Brought that Nebraska tradition with them. Second and 13. Stevens Howling runs into his own man trying to set a block out in front of him. He'll get those three yards back, and that's about it. You know, Howling's might be little, but I'll tell you what, you could hear that pop all the way up here in the press box. Uh, he ran into his own guy. I think it was uh, Joe Thomas, the right tackle. But uh, that, that was a collision. Well, Stull will check his plays. It's third down and about 10. Plenty of fans in the stands tonight at Heinz Field. This will be the side of the Steelers game tomorrow. We'll have to get to work right after the game and turn this around for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Stevens howling in motion. Stull some pressure. 15, 10. Puts his head down and he's got a first down. Tackled by Cook, but not before he picks up 11 yards and it'll make it a first and goal for Pitt. Now, still, you see that when he got up from that? Now, that's something positive, and it's his first shot. I really think it's important a lot of times for a young quarterback to get hit like this and give a hit like this. I think that's really important. Now, it just kind of get him going, get him in the game. Nice scram. Look at well covered, man to man coverage. Again, another blitz. Jimmy Williams, the defensive coordinator, is bringing the heat. Now 12 plays in the second quarter 11 on this drive for Pittsburgh and Stevens Howling was tripped up before he could get back to the line of scrimmage you're going to lose probably a yard on the play. Yeah the the center Rob Hauser he just uh, he, he just had a little bit of penetration there and uh, Stevens Howling wasn't able to, to see look at it right there see the, the center he, he yeah. kind of he, he, that was a, a negative play for him. Isn't it funny how many times you can actually get tackled by your own. Oh, teammate? Absolutely. That was. Uh, uh, Anel Montanez, the defensive tackle that got a good push on the center that time. Here comes the blitz, but it's going to be called back on a flag. They were sending just about everybody timeout. on that play. Pittsburgh. It's going to be a timeout for Pitt. Team Panthers timeout. will take their first timeout with 3.30 remaining here in the opening half of play. It's game number two for Buffalo, game number two for Pitt. Bulls are trying for their second victory of the season Panthers trying to win for the first time under seconds. the direction of time Dave Wanstead it's going to be just a 30 second timeout and Dave as you mentioned Dave is now these are his kids basically now. Well, they really are he's you know he's got uh, three great recruiting classes in a row and talking to him yesterday here's what he said if I'm going to get this program going I've got a number one get a bunch of great defensive linemen in here check he feels like he has them number two I got to get the running back position set check he's got them between McCoy and uh, Stevens Hollings he's got two good ones the quarterback position number three we're not there yet uh, uh, but you know this young guy Stull has a lot of talent this is really going to help him tonight if he has a big night you know you look at the depth chart and any team that lists four quarterbacks on his depth chart, you know there's a little bit of a question mark there. there's a big problem because you know what as a coach you'd like to have this is my guy right if he gets it, it, it's you know he's not the guy yet and now he's got the talent to be the guy but he hasn't done it consistently so far and of course let's be honest this is really only his third game as a starter hurt in the opening game broke his thumb last year in the opener and was done for the year and this one's going to be called down. Wow. 
Now the last one was a timeout. This is a flag. Let's we'll see what the call is. So False he, start. Number 81 offense. Yep. Somebody got the in a hurry there. That was Kinder. Remains second down. Boy, you just hate that as a coach. And Dave Wanstad is not going to like that when you come off of a timeout and uh, and get out and then you make a mistake. Not good. Reset the game clock to 3:30. Especially for a senior wide receiver Absolutely. and a good one like Derek Kinder. 3:30 will be placed on the game clock. Second and goal. It is second and goal, but the ball is backed out at the 13-yard line, which makes it a whole different situation. Oh, that really hurts. That really hurts down here. Stevens howling in motion. Blitz still on the blitz, gets it away, and it's too tall, incomplete. That was Devontae Shannon, the safety that came on a safety blitz. They didn't pick it up. He was right in the face of Bill Stoll. Take a look. Watch number seven come right there. Totally unblocked right in his face. You can't blame the quarterback on that one. No. But the difference is that the front four of Buffalo really have not individually applied any pressure and they have made many very many tackles no, either. No they haven't but it's but the blitzes have been fairly effective and there has been a bunch of them. Why not what do you got to lose that's complete in the flat inside the 10 inside the five down to the four is McGee. Nice move by Cedric McGee and I believe that was Kinder out blocking ahead of him. let's take a look was it Kinder or Turner let's see. That's a pretty good block right there. Very good block right there. Winters that was neither. That was T.J. Porter. Now Winters had to come up and make the tackle. It is fourth down and goal to go, and the Panthers will go for a 21-yard field goal. Well, this is absolutely the correct call. Connor Lee. Some of the fans didn't like it, but you got to do this. And he will boot it through. The Panthers will add to their lead. It's 10 6. Pittsburgh on top. It was a long drive for Pitt. Unfortunately for them, it, it reached only three instead of six or seven. But nonetheless, they add to their lead. The Panthers on top at home against Buffalo. Want to get strong? Want to get lean? Want to get ripped? Well, now you can with Iron Gym, the multifunction training system that raises the bar on upper body exercise. Iron Gym turns any door into your own personal gym in just seconds. Its unique design wraps around your door frame and uses leverage, so there's no screws and no damage to your door. Start off with shoulder shredding, bicep burning, chin ups, and pull ups to develop and strengthen your shoulders, arms, back, and lats. And with three different grip positions narrow grip, wide grip, and neutral you can switch up your routine and keep challenging your muscles but we're not finished there take it to the floor for deep push-ups for a greater range of motion and no strain on your wrists and it's a sturdy base for tricep dips then finish your workout at the base of your door with gut busting crunches for rock hard abs and obliques Iron Gym is the way to get in serious shape fast. In just minutes a day, you'll build lean muscle and get ripped. With Iron Gym, you can do pull-ups, chin-ups, push-ups, dips, and crunches. Every exercise you need to build a powerful upper body, and you'll see real results in just 30 days, guaranteed. Order Iron Gym today for just two payments of $29.99. As a bonus, you'll also get these hanging ab straps for a more explosive abdominal workout. But call right now, and we'll cut the price in half. That's right, you'll get Iron Gym with the hanging ab straps for just one payment of $29.99. Take the Iron Gym Challenge, use it for 30 days, and if you don't see real results, return it for a full refund. But you've got to call now. Call 1-800-361-9229 to order the Iron Gym for only $29.99 and get ripped with the Iron Gym Challenge. That's 1-800-361-9229. Call now. Panthers lead at 10 to 6. I'm John Sanders along with Doug Graber. Interestingly enough, Doug, each team has had the football only three times in this opening half. There have been some long drives. That was a six minute drive there by Pittsburgh. Panthers scored twice. Bulls scored once. So let's see what happens now. Yeah the first quarter was all Buffalo 
in the second quarter now ever since they scored Pitt is really starting to come on on offense and defense starting to play with a lot more confidence starting to really fly around Briggs will handle the kickoff duties from the 30 yard line Roosevelt is deep for the Bulls they're going to have it for the fourth time in this opening half nice kick great kick. no chance right there not returnable. So the Bulls will start at their own 20 yard line with just 242 remaining to be played. You know, and it's interesting, Dave Wanstad is really coaching all the special teams himself, which I, I love doing as a head coach. I did it myself. Take a look at Willie's stats right here so far. 10 out of 14, man, he's accurate. Now he's up to 265 without a pick. And West Virginia is taking it on the chin at East <laughs> Carolina, 24 to three. And the crowd really liked that when that sure score they, went up. That's the one they've been cheering throughout the game. <laughs> First and ten at the 20-yard line. See if the Bulls can get it going on this possession. Willie rolls right, looks right, started the throw, and now dumps it out of bounds. And again, that's a coverage situation there. He had nobody to throw to. No place to go. And of course, you know when you sprint out like that, you do cut the field in half. And that was very, very well defense. Take a look at it right here. He's sprinting out. And of course, you slide all your zone coverages over with that. Nice job of McKillop staying with it right there and putting pressure on. That's what a senior quarterback can do. Don't force it. Just, hey, let's, let's play another down. Well, Scott McKillop was one of the, was the nation's leader in tackles per game a year ago. Had one sack last week. And he's played well. He's been in a lot of plays so far tonight. Second down 10 for the Bulls. A little bit of a delayed handoff that time, and it's going to pick up good yardage. The first down, as a matter of fact, by Starks. Romeo's made the tackle, but Starks fights his way all the way out to, to near the 35-yard yeah. line. Actually, that, that that ball came out yes, right it there, did. and Niedermeyer picked it up number 75, and he was the one advancing it down the field. Well, you can't give all the yardage then to Starks. No, can you, you can't. You got to give Niedermeyer about three here. Let's take a look. That's called the slip draw. That was Niedermeyer pulling on the play. I think he was down. I think, uh, in my opinion, he was down right there. Well, they did not rule him no, down. No, they didn't. Five wide receivers, and first down and 10 at the 35. Willie looks left, throws wow. left, and the catch is made. That's a first down at midfield. Drilled it to Jackson that time. 15 yard pickup to midfield. This is a very, very well conceived uh, offensive plan. They spread the field, they run it. They throw it. They do a lot of different things. They move the pocket. Take a look at this throw. Wow. That ball was bobbled. Uh, that was Ernest Jackson. But I'll tell you what, that was a terrific throw. Same formation, empty backfield, and the catch is made for about four yards on the play. Again, it was Roosevelt there. He'll pick up four. Ransom defensively, one of the linebackers for Pitt. Stops him at the 46 yard line. Second down, six, minute and a half to go in Boy, the opening half of play. You just sense that Willie is really getting into a rhythm here. I mean, every throw is right on the money. And he is emptying the backfield again as Starks moves out to the right in the slot. There's, There's another one. Roosevelt makes the catch inside the 30, 25, 24 yard line. Ransom made the tackle, but. A 23 yard pickup and why is that slant play so open Doug. Well you know because they're spreading the field so much I mean with this five wide receiver offense they've got the field spread and that's exactly what it does and if you don't match up your nickel and go man you're going to have some slots right there and again that was Austin Ransom number 86 you can't give that inside release. Well, they have all their timeouts remaining Willie steps up and now he's going to run 15 he'll slide down at about the 13 yard line before he takes a hit. Well you know I asked uh, Turner Gill the question the other day is this uh, young man an NFL quarterback and he, he definitely thought he was and you know what <laughs> I've got to agree and based on what I'm seeing right here what a drive this is. Well, he should know shouldn't he. He absolutely should know. You know he's had his he's coached a lot of great quarterbacks in his days at Nebraska pretty darn good one himself. Ball is spotted at the 13 time yard out. line. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh takes That's the timeout. That is time their out. their third second timeout, right? And now you, again, you've got Buffalo in the red zone. They've been good in the red zone. Uh, you talk about Mac quarterback legends, Leftwich, Roethlisberger, who will play in this 
Stadium tomorrow. And Pennington, that's a pretty good trio, isn't it, Doug? Yeah, it really is. And here's some of the good ones that are still there. Uh, <laughs> Drew Willie is certain one, one of them. Uh, Nate Davis at Ball State uh, is, uh, look at his numbers. And uh, Dan Lefevre at Central Michigan. I tell you what, there's three pretty good ones in the MAC right now. Well, Lilly's had a great first half. He's 13 of 18 for 123 yards. So he has done what they hoped he would do. He's kept this Buffalo Bulls offense moving down the field, and they are knocking at the door at the 13 with a first and 10. Well, you know, and, and this offense uh, is very, very well conceived. I'm very, very impressed. Uh, again, here we go. Spread the field. Five wide receivers. Empty backfield. Willie throws it short. The hit is made. The ball comes loose. I think that's going to be incomplete. Yep. That was that was good defense right there. And Williams was there to make the hit. And Jackson could not hang on. So a good job defensively for Pittsburgh. Excellent job. Let's take a look at it right here. There's the collision right there by Williams. The red shirt freshman linebacker out of Naples, Florida. Man, that was a collision. Time yeah. out. Buffalo. Buffalo will take That's its first, first time out. Team timeout. I'll tell you, if you're going to run those plays over the middle, seconds. you better be prepared to be Time hit. Out. If you're the defense, <laughs> contrary to that, you need to stick them in there to make them a little gun shy. You know. You know. It, you know. I coached the secondary in the NFL for a lot of years, and, and the creed was, they want to throw it over the middle. That's fine. <laughs> Let's make sure they pay the price. Well, a reminder coming up at halftime. Pitts basketball coach Jamie Dixon will join us for a live interview. We'll have all the stats and the highlights, and we will update Doug's keys to the game to see how these two teams are doing. I think that's one of the great things when you do keys. You need to go back and look and say, well, this one worked, this one didn't work. You know Absolutely. What I'm saying? Hey, I got to be accountable. Everybody else is. <laughs> Sun actually popped out there briefly. Dave Wanstead's team is in front, but it's a lead that's in jeopardy here in the final 45 seconds. Boy, give uh, give Buffalo a lot of credit for answering the bell here. They, the momen momentum had totally turned, and now they're turning it back. Again, they spread the field with the five wide receivers. Willie looks to the end zone, throws, knocked away. Incomplete. Great recovery defensively by Barry. He got an arm in there and knocked that one away. You know what, uh, Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator, he said, okay, that's enough of that. They came with a blitz and straight man to man, and a nice job by Barry closing right there on Brett Hamlin. And as you saw, the fellow by the where's number 40, Time Mike Phillips, was also right in the yeah. area. Buffalo. Well, Buffalo will take card. timeout number Team two. Timeout. That only took five seconds. seconds on the last timeout. incompletion, and it's still third down and ten for the Bulls, who have played well here in the first half. Big, big play for the pit defense right now because, again, this team has been very, very, very solid in the red zone. Now, they've shown that spread formation. And, of course, with Gill there calling the plays, this is an offense that proved last week that they're ready to play with about anybody. Yeah, you know, and, and again, uh, take a look at last season, the turnaround under Gill. Five wins. Now, that, that's, you know, that may not seem like a lot, but four and two, in the uh, in the East Division of the Mid American Conference, in that East Division, uh, listen to some of the teams there. That's Miami, Bowling Green, Ohio U, who who, who had the lead on Ohio State going in the fourth quarter today. That's an excellent, excellent division in the Mid American Conference. I'll tell you what, I, I coached six years in that league when I was a young football coach. It'll never change. It's a great, great league, and it'll surprise you how good they are. Well, they changed their formation now. Starks yep. is the lone running back. Motion man is Roosevelt. Fake to Starks. Now they'll dump it short. That's knocked away. So an excellent defensive stand by Pittsburgh. Duncan got a piece of that ball. Makes it incomplete. It will be fourth down. Well, that was the metal screen, and Rashad Duncan, boy, did he read that. He was all over it. Take a look at it right here. See, he feels it right there, and there he goes. What a great job by Rashad Duncan out of Bell Glade, Florida. Well, he was actually there a little too soon, wasn't he? <laughs> well, that, I, I, hey, he's a defensive <laughs> line, but we don't expect him to have great coverage. For the kick. Delay the game. 
Buffalo five yard penalty. Well, they'll back him up Many five. Remember the down. new rule about the 40 second yep. clock, even after an incompletion, when the referee says, okay, let's go, it's 40 seconds and that's it. Dave wants that mission that that's a problem now that is in college football. Not getting your plays off, but getting your field goal. They're just not used to having to do it that fast. And remember, Principe had a kick thrown right back in his face early. Uh, that really, really bothers and gets into a lot of kickers' heads. It'll be a 35 yard attempt. It is up, it is long enough, and it is good. So the Bulls are going to call it 36 yards, and Principe knocks it through. And make it 10 to 9. So the Bulls did get something out of that drive. They ate up most of the clock here in the second quarter of play. And to Turner Gill's delight, they at least get three. You got to get something, right? Oh, you have to, and I, that was absolutely the right call. And, and I thought the key thing on that series was when uh, when they were going with the five wide receiver offense and Phil Bennett blitzed it finally and played man to man. Then you saw <laughs> Buffalo got out of it right away. Changed a little bit. Yes, ten they plays, did. 62 yards. They took two minutes and 10 seconds off the clock. And the Panthers, with about a half a minute to go, will have one more chance here in the opening half of play. Right and Stevens Howling will be the deepest men. AJ Principe will do the kicking. And the Panthers certainly would like a big, big play. It's kind of been missing from their offense this year is that that big play. Well, that's exactly what uh, Coach Wanstat was talking about yesterday. Uh, that's really been a problem. And if they really think about it, they haven't made a really big play down the field tonight either. No, nope, they have on their last drive, certainly their last two drives, they certainly controlled the clock and the football. Stevens Howling will pick it up in the end zone and bring it out. 10 15 puts his head down, and that's all the farther he's going to get as he squeezes out a couple more yards to about the 18. It'll be first down 10 for the Panthers with 24 seconds to go in the half, an 18 yard return. 26. Yeah, and I think right here, uh, Coach Wanstad is going to want to just kind of sit on the ball. If they'd gotten a big return and gotten out to the 40 yard line, that's a whole different story. But being inside the 20, I'll be surprised if they don't just, uh, and although they're coming out with a four wide receiver yes, set they are. Lone running back is Deshaun McCoy. He's going to get the football on a little bit of a delay, and he's got the moves to get out for about eight yards. Just short of the 30-yard line. Winners made the tackle with some help from his friends. Yeah, good strategy. Spread the field out. Let your great back uh, try to make a play and make somebody miss. And the Panthers Time are going out. to take another timeout. Pittsburgh. That's our third final. And the Panthers have used their third and final first half timeout. Now you got a little breathing room, you know. Now you, you might want to throw one down the field. Although honestly, myself, I'd still want to just get into the locker room here with the lead. Panthers on top by one. Each team has a field goal. Each team has a touchdown. The difference in the game was the missed extra point by Principe for Buffalo. And you talk about missing one. He missed it badly. Didn't oh, yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, right yeah, into yeah, the line. And I think that was the direct result of Pitt. Blocking that field goal in the very first uh, first series of the first That's quarter. That's right. Boy, what a beautiful beautiful evening here in Pittsburgh, and uh, fans are having fun. Like to see I'd like to see Pitt do a little more on offense. There you see McKillick right there. What a productive guy he is. He is a great linebacker, one of the best in the country. See what Stull decides to do. He's under center. Same type of play. It'll be a first down and more as they go out beyond the 40 yard line. Now you might want to take a timeout and throw one down the field. Well, they can't take a timeout. They don't have any yeah, left. You're right. <laughs> Newton. That, that, that would be a problem. <laughs> Sorry about that. Newton made the tackle and they're going to try to hurry and get one more play. He's going to down it right there. Yeah. So they've got one more play coming with three seconds left. Now uh, again with the ball on the 40 yard line. I think you definitely take a shot. You throw a Hail Mary, you just hope for something uh, positive to happen, interference, whatever. 
Second and ten. Now they'll use four wide receivers. Yep. I'm sure we're going to see some kind of a sprint out to the wide side of the field. Yep, here it comes. There was some pressure. He runs away from it and throws it up for grabs. And it is grabbed by Buffalo. Well, that's the way the half is going to end as the Bulls make the interception. It certainly didn't hurt him. Cook picked it off. It's 10 to 9. The Pittsburgh Panthers have the lead. We hope you'll stay with us for halftime. We check some of the highlights and the stats. And Pittsburgh's basketball coach, Jamie Dixon, will be joining me. And we'll be talking about the upcoming basketball season. It's not that far away, even though it's early in the football season. The Bulls head to their locker room, the Panthers to theirs. Halftime score Pittsburgh 10. Buffalo 9. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Oh, honey. It's Gorman. Bottom of the ninth. Gorman down to his last strike. He had a pitch. He's having problems at work again. Mm -hmm. be going. Here's a pitch. Strike three. Game over. Watch and control your home TV with Slingbox anywhere you can get an internet or cellular connection. You should have traded that guy a long time ago. Fired. Hey. Fired. Slingbox. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, put the gun down! Good cop. Get off the wallet, man. Scared the hell out of me. Man, isn't it? Bad neighbor. The outside lights are shining right into our upstairs. See how that could be annoying. On September 19th. What the hell are you doing? You didn't ask my permission to plant these trees. Come on over. Let's do something. Who can you call? Get off my property. Won't call the cops. I'll tell you who's on duty. When you can't call the police. He's trying to kill us. Call! Lakeview Terrace. Rated PG-13. They say 40 is the new 30, and 30 is the new 20. But is your hair loss making you look older than you feel? Then you need Follicare, a leading product that's better and easier than before. The growth has been incredible. I've regrown my hair at least two, three times over in such a short period of time. Follicare is better because its unique four-in-one action targets all the major reasons for hair loss, helping you turn back the age clock. I started using Follicare, and within less than six months, I've seen a tremendous amount of difference. If you're young and starting to thin, Follicare is for you. If you want a thicker head of hair, Follicare is for you. If you've been losing hair for a long time, Follicare is definitely for you. You know, I would have never thought at 43 years old that I could have a head of hair better than my 23-year-old son. I recommend Follicare to all my patients because it works. Don't let simple hair loss make you look older. Follicare takes years off your appearance, all for as little as a dollar a day. For you skeptics, Follicare comes with a full one-year satisfaction guarantee. Order Follicare today. Like thousands of others, you'll be glad you did. Tune in to SNY for Jets Post Game Live. In-depth analysis, player reaction, and expert opinion immediately after every Jets game. Jets Post Game Live, only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Tune in to SNY for First and Goal with Mike Tannenbaum. Presented by Atlantic Health. A detailed preview of the upcoming Jets game every Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. you back to the north side of Pittsburgh where the Panthers lead the Bulls by a score of 10 to 9 and we have some special guests up here in the booth. One's name is Jack. The other name is Jamie. Jamie of course is the head coach of the University of Pittsburgh. Nice of you to bring your son get him out of the house and watch a football game. huh? Yeah it's great. It's great to get the family out here and uh, enjoy the game and a uh, good first half for us a good start for us. Let's talk about your basketball team just a little bit. I know you must be disappointed that you're not going back to Madison Square Garden because you guys play great when you get in the garden. Yeah we've been good there and obviously and uh, we try to play there as often as we can um, this year it didn't work out but we've got two games in Newark we'll be have two other games in New Jersey so we got back as close as we could four games in New Jersey and uh, we've got plenty of good opponents on the schedule well you look at some of the action from last year I want to talk about your point guard situation is he going to be healthy to start the season well, we think he is I mean the, uh, he got the cast off uh, two days ago and uh, Levance will be uh, uh, working out in about another week as far as conditioning and trying to strengthen it up so we think he's gonna be ready for practice that's October 17th and and uh, he'll be right by season time. We're talking about Levance Fields and he has done a terrific job for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Is that the same type of injury that knocked him out last year? Yeah, but it's not not as severe and uh, I think we're you know we're going to have him time but we gave him time off after the season was all over and he took uh, about two months off where he didn't play played for a couple months felt fine and then there was some slight soreness in, in August and uh, he played in the Steve Nash camp he played with our guys all summer long but uh, decided we could have done either way uh, but he decided he wanted to 
get the surgery uh, or let it rest and he went with the surgery so uh, I think it's uh, we feel very very good about where he's at right now and he, he's going to be back by uh, ready for a season. Talk about some of your new players. What are the new faces we're going to see this year? Uh, we had a four freshmen, really good freshmen, and they had a great summer uh, both on the floor, off, on, in the classroom. All four got a uh, 4.0s in the summer, so they did very well in that regard. Um, good kids, working hard. Uh, Ashton Gibbs, Trayvon Woodall, two guards from New Jersey, and then we've got Dwight Miller, who's from the Bahamas originally, was down in Houston for high school. He's six eight kid, very physical, plays very hard. And then Nasir Robinson, six five kid from Philadelphia. The interesting thing about those four kids, they uh, all won state champions. Championships, and then their junior year between the four of them, uh, they only lost three games between the four of them. So they're winners. And you've got the big local boy inside to anchor that offense, right? Well, there's no question. He's a he's a he's a, he's a presence uh, on and off the floor. He's just a great kid. He's uh, we're fortunate to have him, and I think Pittsburgh's proud of a uh, Dewan Blair. He's just a, a great kid. He's got a great smile, and he uh, loves to play. You know, that's the one thing watching him play. I don't think anybody has more fun on the court than he does. He enjoys all of it, doesn't he? He loves to play. They were playing. Our guys were playing this morning before the game. Uh, they'll play tomorrow morning as well. These, our guys love to play, and he's one of them. And he, he shows a little bit more with that smile. It's pretty evident. But we like guys that love to play basketball, and that, that's what we got again. They'll play late, late at night, early in the morning. Uh, but that's why they keep getting better. Your dad brought you to the game tonight. Does he let you go to basketball practice too? Yeah. How do you like that? I really like it a lot. Are you going to be a basketball player? Mm, yeah. You don't sound too sure of that. What if you had to play for your dad? What would that be like? That would be like uh, I would like win a game for him and stuff. <laughs> he had a soccer out. game today. <laughs> Jack, thanks for joining us. Jamie, thanks for joining us. Okay. Who do you look for as the top teams to beat this year in the Big East? Connecticut, Louisville, they got the most experience coming back. I think Province is, it could be a surprise team with all the five starters plus their point guard returning uh, who was out last year. Uh, but I'm telling you, if it's uh, not the best conference, maybe in the history. I mean, when you talk about the number of teams, history of college basketball, I mean, you're talking about 10 probably possible division, uh, NCAA tournament teams. Wow. Good luck. Thanks, John. We'll see you, obviously. Yes, Thanks, Jack, well. for joining us, and we thank you for sticking with us at halftime. We've got more to come. We'll take a look at some of our highlights and stats. Panthers lead at intermission 10-9 over the Bulls of Buffalo. Timeshare, turn it into cash. No more mortgage payments. Thank you, Timeshares Only. At Timeshares Only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. Call Timeshares Only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. The over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now can be the best time to sell. Call 800-366-1637. That's 800-366-1637. Attention men with thinning hair. Salon expert Giuseppe Franco recommends Proceed for his Beverly Hills celebrities. Just listen to what he says about Proceed. Well, first, it's the only product I've ever seen that works on thinning hair just by using it once every 90 days. It's not a daily regimen or twice daily regimen. Who has the time for that nonsense? Just use Proceed every 90 days and it works. When I go like this with my hand, it, it, it feels like I have a, a full head of hair back there. Like, I really noticed some tremendous difference. My hair is thicker, uh, fuller, and you don't notice the, the, the thinning spots. He ran his hand through my hair, and you know, he looked at the top, and he's like, it works. It works. I don't own the company. Well, I don't know anything about it. I just know that this is the greatest product ever for the appearance of your thinning hair. Look, stop hiding your hair underneath these caps. Stop denying that your hair looks bad, and do something about it. You can be on the road to full of thicker hair right now by getting on a Proceed program. Hey, I'm Giuseppe Franco. 
I'm not putting my name on the line for something that doesn't work. Now you can try Proceed absolutely risk-free. The exact product selling at Giuseppe Franco's of Beverly Hills for $450 for just $19.95. Plus, if you order today, Proceed will also include its volumizing shampoo and conditioner absolutely free. Proceed. We're the one. Just one application every 90 days. Operators are standing by, so have your credit card ready to order right now. We are back. It's 10-9 at halftime here at Heinz Field on the north side of Pittsburgh. What a difference in the first two quarters of this game as we welcome you back. I'm John Sanders along with Doug Graber. Obviously, Doug, the first quarter was pretty much all Buffalo. Right. It was all Buffalo. But you know what? When the McCoy finally got it in the end zone for Pitt, I, I sensed a huge change in that sideline. The momentum certainly changed at that point. And of course, one of the big plays for Pitt was that blocked field goal attempt. But let's look at the highlights for Buffalo because Willie, as advertised, has been terrific. Wow. You know, you can see why he's going, uh, gone so long without the interception. Uh, you know, he, he's been very, very accurate all the way through. Look at him here throwing on the run. He has been tremendously impressive to me. 6'4. He's got good touch, he's got great accuracy. Uh, you know, he just he's making all the throws. And Thermalus gets it in the end zone for the opening score for Buffalo. They wanted to add to that lead, but they weren't able to do it because of this. Well, I think this was huge in the game. And of course, Dave wants that coaches those teams. And, and here we go. Finally, Stolt gets going. He gets into the act, makes a nice throw on the sideline to Kinder. Makes a good throw to the big tight end here. Good effort sticking it down inside the five. And this guy, McCoy, now he, he knows how to put it in the end zone, no question. And for McCoy, just his second touchdown of the season. He had one last week. He has one so far tonight. Uh, Ten points for Pitt. Obviously, if you're a fan or a coach, you'd like to see more production from them. Well, you, you certainly would, and I think the key is to get a good balance going, get McCoy going. Buffalo has blitzed them a, a bunch. Now, the only way you're going to get them out of the blitz package is, is make some throws down the field. Uh, Stahl, has, you can see his confidence coming. He's got to make a big play for Pitt. Well, I think you had a good point in the first half when they did get that touchdown that everybody, offense and defense, kind of relaxed. A little they bit. really did. You could see it in their special teams that their defense started flying around. But give Buffalo credit. That was a great drive at just before half and, a, and good. You know what? In one of our keys to the game was red zone. They didn't get it in. Uh, and that was a nice job by the Pitt defense. They did get three points to make it a one point game. We have more coming up. From here at Heinz Field on the north side of Pittsburgh, halftime. Pittsburgh leads at 10 to 9 over Buffalo. One thirty a.m. only on SNY. Continues in downtown Pittsburgh. You look at one of the many bridges that span the rivers. Here were the Monongahela. They form the Ohio right here. Look at the first half stats. Dominated obviously by the Bulls and it turned around in the second quarter of play. Well it really did. That's a tale of two quarters right there and, and the time of possession again. Uh, you know Buffalo had it. Uh, they had the football really the whole first quarter just about and then of course they had the long drive at the very uh, end of the second quarter. Well, let's talk about your keys to the game tonight. Willie, of course, was terrific, and here are your keys, and that streak continues. 21 yeah. more passes, it, no interceptions. You know what, and I can see why he, he doesn't throw interceptions. He's just extremely accurate. He's smart with the football. Uh, you know, you're going to have to make a great play to get a pick on this guy. Uh, the, the key for Buffalo was to hold McCoy to 4.0 or less. They obviously have not done that, so that's good on the pit side. Buffalo has been a very, very good team in the red zone. Again, they were two for two tonight, although uh, they did force them to a field goal on that last drive, which I think was a, was a key thing. Now let's take a look at Pitt. That was the huge key right there. No fumbles. Now, remember, uh, Stull actually uh, had a fumble that was recovered, that they recovered when he was sacked. But they have not turned it over on a fumble. Uh, 
they're going to try like crazy to get an interception off of Willie, but that, that's going to be tough duty. We talked about that. They have stopped the long ball. There has not been lo one long throw down the field. I mean, they've had their share of 15 yards, but they haven't had that big 30, 40, 50 yard play. So Pitt has certainly achieved uh, those goals except the interception. Uh, Willie was 13 of 21 for 123 yards, no interceptions. His outstanding running back. Starks was carried 11 times for 63 yards for Pittsburgh McCoy carried seven times for 42 yards. We'll take one more break. When we come back we'll be ready for the second half of play. Pittsburgh leading Buffalo 10 to 9. Stay with us. We'll be back with more from downtown Pittsburgh right after this. I came to the University of Pittsburgh to learn with the best. At Pitt, we become better students. We learn that education extends beyond the classroom. At the University of Pittsburgh, we learn how to explore and discover. And how to gain knowledge from every experience. If we're known by the company we keep, then at the University of Pittsburgh, we're among the best. The back pages in a whole new life. It's unbelievable. As Chris Cotter. It isn't like great right. pictures are growing on trees. Joe Beningo. Who's kidding who? And the daily news writers behind the top stories deliver the hottest New York sports topics with debate. Is there any place for this in baseball? Opinion. I just don't like the attitude of this team. And a whole lot of attitude. Of course he hit him on purpose. Daily News Live, presented by City. Weekdays at 5 with Encores at 11 and 1.30 a.m. Only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. For many men, an interview suit is a first step toward a second chance. Donate your gently used professional clothing during the Men's Warehouse National Suit Drive and receive a 10% discount toward your next purchase. I guarantee it. Exceptionally brewed for a taste that's pure Amsterdam. Amstel Light, one damn good beer. For many men, an interview suit is a first step toward a second chance. Donate your gently used professional clothing during the Men's Warehouse National Suit Drive and receive a 10% discount toward your next purchase. I guarantee it. Back 10-9 is the score here. Big East College football from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And let's take a look, Doug, at some other scores involving Big East schools. Connecticut in overtime to beat Temple. Wow. Akron knocking off Syracuse. Wow. Louisville There's another Mac school with a, with a win over Syracuse. That's right. Akron, they're much improved from what they had been in the past. Big East action, Louisville opening with a victory. They're going to be one of the better teams in the league. We're getting revved up for the second half of play and remember the Panthers will have the football to start the second half. Both teams are back on the field. And we are just about ready for our second half kickoff. Pitt will get its first possession. And the Panthers scored on two of their three possessions in the first half and you saw the Panther on the bike there Tommy Duhart getting loosened up. Here's the comparison of the quarterbacks and you can see that Willie basically had the better of it. Well, you know, but the key is uh, the, the, what he does best is throw the ball down the field, and really Pitt did a pretty good job on that. And Stull, remember, got off to a very, very slow start, and then in the second quarter, he seemed to just he, he get some juice, get his confidence going a little bit. I think when he had that scramble and took a hit, I think that was good for him, and he kind of got it going a little bit. All right, let's take a look at some top 25 scores from around the country, according to the Associated Press. The teams that are ranked nationally this year. Remember, Pitt was number 25 at the start of the season and then stubbed their toe last week against Bowling Green. Georgia, no problem against Central Michigan. Ohio State was in trouble a little bit against Ohio early in that game. OU rolling over Cincinnati and Miami and Florida. That'll be a great ball game. It comes up tonight. Also got Missouri off to a good start. They were one of the surprise teams. And how about that? East Carolina knocks off number eight West Virginia. The Mountaineers scored only three points. That's hard to believe, Doug. Wow. That that 
You're right. Now, of course, you know, they really had some bad weather coming in there with uh, the hurricane uh, hitting the, you know, the East Coast. But, uh, wow, that's shocking that West Virginia would only get three points, especially after they hammered East Carolina last year. Now, what goes around comes around. You know what they say? <laughs> Principe will do the kicking off. Deep for the Panthers will be Stevens Howling and Andre Wright. It would like some decent field position. Here comes the kick. Interesting formation for the kickoff. It's fielded at the 15 yard line. A little bit of room. Sidesteps a tackler to get out across the 30. Stevens Howling with a decent return out to near the 35. A 20 yard run back of the kickoff to start the second half. And let's see if the Panthers can maintain what they had, Doug, because they scored on two uh, their last two possessions of the opening half. Well, uh, obviously the key here is, uh, you know, to get the ball to McCoy. That that's really the key. And again, that offensive line is athletic enough to get him going, averaging six yards a carry so far. Stall looks to pass. The pass is complete outside the 45 to the 46-yard line. Oh, Derek Turner, Turner yep. made the catch. Cook ran him out, but he picks up 11 and a first down. You know, it, it just see a total difference in this quarterback. Just look how definitive he is right here. Look him set his feet right on the money. Nice timing throw. We didn't see that in the first quarter out of him. Ball is at the 48-yard line now for the Panthers. Turner will go to the left side. They'll have three receivers in this formation. One wide on each side, and then the slot man comes in motion. Looking left, throwing left, pass is caught for about five. And again, that's Turner who was on that side. Thomas coming up to make the tackle. He'll get five. Of course, of course, and Turner right here is the son of Odessa Turner, pretty good uh, wide receiver himself for the Giants in the 49. Nice catch, boy. He plucked that one right out of the air. 6'3, nice size out of Teaneck, New Jersey. Third catch for Turner for 27 yards. Second down and five. Out of the eye formation now for Pittsburgh. Playing at their home field. Hines field. Natural grass. Not much there at all that time for McCoy. No game. Shannon and company made the tackle. Full strong safety blitz. I mean they had every gap covered. A lot of penetration. That's a run down defense all the way. Take a look at it right here. See the safety coming at the top. They had every gap covered and that's tough to run against. Well they did give him a yard on the play. So it'll be third down and four coming up for Pittsburgh. Three wide receivers in the formation. Looks like a running formation here. It's not. He's looking for that quick pass and he's got it on the far sideline. Once again it's Turner and Thomas is the man covering him and pushes him out of bounds but he picks up six and he's got a first down for the Panthers. You know it, it looks to me like Buffalo defensive coordinator here's the three step throw nice timing good throw right on the sideline. It looks like Jimmy Williams has decided OK if they're going to be, uh, beat us let's make stall beat us. We're not going to let Sean McCoy beat us and, the, and you know they've been have put eight in the box and bringing a lot of strong safety blitz he's tough to run against. Goal will dump it out into the flat. McCoy, 30, 25, inside the 20, and he's run down. Byam sprung him with a good block, and McCoy picks up 23 yards. That's the best throw that he's made tonight. That is not an easy throw. Boy, he put it right on the money. Nice time. He take a look at this way. He didn't have to make any adjustment. Ball was thrown in front of him. Nice block by the tight end. Uh, that was, I, in my opinion, the best throw he's made tonight. That is not an easy throw. Down to the 16-yard line. It'll be first down 10. And the Panthers moving the ball on their first possession here in the second half. McCoy. He is knifed down right at the 15-yard line by Cook. Nice recovery by Cook. Going to give him two yards on the play. Yeah, that was a great play by Cook because the wide receiver cracked on the outside. Take a look at it. the wide receiver cracks down. See it right there, and that's Cook one on one makes a nice open field tackle on a tough guy to handle in the open field. A yard and a half gain. Checking into the lineup now is McGee for the Panthers. He'll be split to the left side along with Turner. Second down.
Stahl delivers the pass. It's caught and bumped out of bounds near the 10 yard line is Kinder. No, another blitz. It was another blitz. And of course, when you blitz, you've got to, your, your, you know, your wide receivers are one on one. And uh, you've got to make these throws and make them. And I tell you, I like the way that Matt Cavanaugh is calling this game because I would say I'm estimating that Buffalo has blitzed 60% of the time. You've got to throw the ball outside. You have to. And let your wide receivers work against those corners. Stevens Howling has checked into the lineup, but he's not in the backfield. It is empty with four wide receivers on third down and five. Here comes the blitz again, dumped over the middle. Clock. That's going to be very close oh. to the first down. Nice, quick throw by Stahl. Option route to the tight end uh, Bynum. And I'll tell you, that was well covered. That was a great throw and a nice catch. Bynum made a terrific catch in this, traffic. Take a look at boy this. And again, he had a free agent right in his face. Smith made the tackle, but you could see, Doug, that he was looking left and then came right back over the middle yeah, of that he, pass. He, he, that time, you know, earlier in the game, he panicked on the blitz. That time, he kept his poise. He knew where he had to go with the football, and he made the throw. You know, I, I really think we're watching the development of a quarterback here. This guy has the tools to be a good player. He's just got to grow up, and, you know, and get confidence. Well, it's first down and goal for the Panthers. He is six of six passing here in the second half is Bill Stull. So he has done a great job. He's been sitting back there in the pocket with a lot of confidence and the, the Bulls have continued to rush him with blitzes. Yeah, and Dave wants that said that the, the worst thing with Bill Stull he's so hard on himself. McCoy will get close. He's going to get down near the goal line. It'll be second and goal coming up, giving five yards on the play. You know, I don't blame him for running left. That's big Jason Pinkston, number 77, and C.J. Davis. Nice school. They got a good, good push right there, and so did Malecki. And uh, just watching those this offensive line on tape, I tell you, I, 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 I'm very impressed. They're very, very athletic. They're still pretty young up front. A lot of juniors and sophomores, but they are athletic. And they're not overly big. I mean, they're good size. The for the six points. Got it in there. And again, you see, going to that left side, and, and I like the call. It'll be Connor Lee coming on to try to extend his record of consecutive PATs. A one yard touchdown run for McCoy. He gets his second TD of the night. And the Panthers once again have moved in front. Makes it 16 for the Panthers, nine for Buffalo. And that drive truly engineered by the quarterback Stull. Billy was. And I'll tell you, I saw a lot of handshakes for Stull when he came off that field. And Dave Wanstatt was the first. 17 to 9. Pittsburgh has the lead. So we will take a timeout with 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter here in downtown Pittsburgh. The Panthers strike on their first possession of the second half and open up a 17 to 9 lead. We'll be right back. Tired of getting last week's burnt mess on this week's dinner? Hi, Steve Barkey, Mr. Do-It-Yourself here. Does this charred mess look familiar? Why spend hundreds on a grill that you can never seem to keep clean? Well, this is Grill Daddy, the revolutionary new grill cleaning tool. The fastest, easiest way to keep your grill clean and your food tasting backyard barbecue great. With one quick turn of the valve, the Grill Daddy releases a stream of water that steam cleans that cooked on, charred on, mess away in seconds. And it sterilizes too. Just preheat, brush, rinse, and sterilize. It's that easy. Grill Daddy leaves your grill spotless and sanitary with no chemicals and no hard work. Use it on stainless steel grills, ceramic grills, iron grills. Grill Daddy keeps them all looking like new. And no more black residue on your grilled food. The stainless steel brush heads are removable, replaceable, and dishwasher safe. And it's the last grill cleaning tool you'll ever need. Nothing cleans like a Grill Daddy. So why spend a fortune on a grill that you can't seem to keep clean when you can get the Grill Daddy? 
You can get your Grill Daddy today for only $14.99. When you call, ask about our Grill Daddy Pro. It's perfect for all your grilling needs, and it makes a great gift. Order right now, and I'll include my Grill Perfect reusable, color-changing beef thermometer free. Just pay shipping and processing. Never have to guess again. In just three seconds, the color tells you whether it's rare, medium, or well. It's the perfect barbecue companion and is available for chicken and fish. Call now and find out how to get free replacement brush heads for life. Here's how to order. To order your Grill Daddy, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-718-2658. That's 1-800-718-2658. Call now to find out how you can get free brush heads for life. So call 1-800-718-2658 and order today. Tune in to SNY for Jets Open Mic, presented by Motorola. Full coverage of Coach Mangini's press conference every Monday and Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Only on SNY. Get to New York Sports here. They're animated, lively, and downright entertaining. Catch the boisterous duo, Chris Carlin and Adam Shy as they take on the latest sports news on Loudmouth. Weeknights at 6, only on SNY. Dave Wanstead's team now has opened up a 17-9 lead, and Doug Dave scored on three of their last four possessions. Of course, one of those was right before the half, so you don't really count that because they were running out the clock. But to recap this one a little bit. Well, that, Snow was on target, and so was McCoy. He really was, and that was a nice throw on the flare and get him matched up against the linebacker. There's a full blitz where he hits the tight end. The safety was unblocked. He got rid of the football, and here's the touchdown over that left side. That was a nice stop by uh, John Malecki pulling around on the power play. There you see Sean McCoy. Now he's finally going to get some smiles going. He's getting the football and doing things with it. Ten plays, 63 yards, and they've had some long drives here tonight. That one took four minutes and 55 seconds off the clock. Roosevelt is deep. For the Bulls, the kickoff will come to him. Field at about the seven-yard line. Run out of bounds at the 25. So about an 18-yard return. And we'll see if the Bulls can answer. Now that's the question, Doug, in this situation. You, you watch Pitt kind of take control offensively. Can you respond with your offense? Well, you've got the guy right there that could definitely respond. And uh, now it'll be in interesting to see if they go with that five wide receiver spread offense or exactly what the strategy is here. And they're going to be three in this possession. Yep. And left Starks is the lone setback. That's an audible. Starks with the 25, the 30, and he spun down as he gets out to about the 33 yard line. The tackle made by McKillop. Who else would you expect? Give him eight on the play. Boy, but they gashed him pretty good here. I mean, Starks really had to take a look at it. Nice job by the offensive line. Nice, simple little zone cutback play. And again, McKillop is all by himself making the tackle. Uh, somebody in that defensive front has got to get a little more penetration and get off a block. Second down and a couple for the Bulls who have had their own long drives in this game. Both teams have put together long stretches where they've had the football with their offensive team on the field. Here comes the blitz. Starks looking to get outside. He will turn the corner, pick up the first down, and he's forced out about the 40-yard line. Well, they had the perfect play on against the blitz. They ran the inside blitz for the linebackers, and they ran just the simple toss. And a nice job by the tight end. Uh, Jesse Rack right here. See him right there, 82. Niedermeyer also. And, and Niedermeyer. You know, whenever they need a, a guy to pull, it always seems like it's Niedermeyer, number 75. Well, he did a good job on that play. They get it to the 40. Gain of six. First down and 10 for the Bulls of Buffalo. Officially the university at Buffalo. Out of the I formation line. Play fake. Willie throwing down the near sideline. Incomplete, but that's going to be pass interference on Pittsburgh. Intended for Jackson, and I think Aaron Barry is going to be flagged for interference. Well, you know, there was definitely some uh, jostling uh, down the field, and that was a uh, man to man coverage, and, he, you know, he was all by himself on him. Pass interference, defense, number 28, 15 yard penalty. Previous spot, automatic first down. They called it on Thatcher. Yeah. No, they had the wrong number. I there. was going to say, I thought it was Aaron Barry. <laughs> yeah, who was it back absolutely there. was Aaron Barry. 
And again, but uh, again, take a look at this throw though. He had some heat. Oh, took a shot right after he got rid of it. But wow, that, that's a good throw. No question about it. You know, it, I don't know. It's too it, bad because Thatcher was nowhere near the play. No. <laughs> Just a little bit of hand fighting there for the football. Uh, you know, they, they certainly, uh, that's a call you can make. It's first down and 10 from the Pittsburgh 45 yard line. Again, play action fake. Throwing short. And did he hang on? Uh, I guess he did. He was kind of bobbling it on his way out of bounds that time. The, uh, Brett Hamlin was, and uh, boy, he took a shot on the sideline, too. He picks up 11 yards. I wasn't sure as he headed for the boundary if he was going to be able to hold the football. Let's take, take a, look. a look. Here's the bobble right here. Hang Watch on. this shot. Whoa. Right in the backside. Yeah, that was uh, Dom Lasico. Boom. And this time they will send Hamlin and Roosevelt to the right side. This is Starks. Get some room outside at the 30. And he'll work his way inside the 30 down near the 25 yard line. He was able to keep his balance. DeSicchio made the initial hit on him and then he was chased out of bounds. I'll tell you, we're going to get a look at this. Watch the tight end here, number 82, Jesse Rack. I mean, he dominates right there. Number 82 did. He just killed the outside linebacker, knocked him right off the football, and uh, that's a that's a problem. Now remember, Pitt has lost their two starting outside linebackers, uh, so it, you know you're seeing some problems there right now. They still have number 40 in the middle of that defense back there. It's second down and four. Starks again puts his head down and gets near the 25-yard line. Maybe a shade short of a first down. Clock continues to roll. McKillop and Romeus were there for the defense for Pitt. You know, and, and here comes uh, here comes the Bulls. Uh, they've answered the bell every time that Pitt has gone down the score. They come right back down the field. And any time you've got a quarterback like Willie on your team, uh, you know, you're always going to be a threat. This has been a great drive now by Buffalo. Now the Panthers had a great drive to start the second half. The second part of this third quarter being dominated by the Bulls offense. Starks with it. I think he's going to get there. It will depend on the spot. Yeah, he really pushes the pile. He really keeps those legs uh -oh. going. Late hit. He saw McKellop backpedaling took a shove from somebody that might have been Niedermeyer. Well and remember in the first half those two <laughs> personal foul penalties yep. really turned the game around as yeah, far as the did. Bulls are concerned one Henry on offense play is a first down following the play dead ball personal foul number 75 on Buffalo. Yep. That's a 15 yard penalty. That will be first down. Well, isn't that his second personal foul. It's the third on the Bulls. Yeah, th this is a very, very foolish uh, penalty right here by Niedermeyer. Here you see him coming out and, and blocking Hanson right there. And there's McKillop filling it. Now take a look at this at the very end. Uh, you know, I, I really didn't see it there. There it is. Oh, there it is right there. Well, uh, <laughs> nice job. Uh, nice job acting by McKillop, too. Yeah. There aren't many people are going to knock him back like that, are they? <laughs> no. Ball is pushed back to the 39 yard line. Willie waits, pumps, throws deep, oh, and it's wide open in the middle of the field. That's going to be a touchdown of 39 yards. Turner and Barry were back there, but Hamlin was all alone. There was nobody close to him that time. Total bust in the coverage uh, for the Pitt Panthers. No question about that. Total by him. He was wide open going down the middle of the field, and Willie just scrambled a little bit, and again, that was the concern. Look at him, looking, looking, looking. Scramble, sees him, and puts it right on the money. That's his fifth catch for 77 yards total. And that's one of those, if you're the receiver, and you turn around and say, hurry, get the ball to me. There's nobody next to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. I'm a little surprised they're not going for two here. They will take one. And back they come again. Uh, that puts it back to a one point game at 17 16 with 641 to play. Is he open? Yeah, there's nobody there. <laughs> hey, how'd you learn to do that? Come on, what's your secret? 
Would you take lessons? You got your own pro? Yep, I got a bunch of them. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Get 12 months of Golf Digest with easy to follow tips and techniques for just $14.97. Order today and receive this DVD absolutely free. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. Jump the wallet, man. Welcome to the neighborhood, Chris. What? Abel Turner, LAPD. Excuse me. Imagine that. Welcome to Lakeview Terrace. I met our new neighbor. He has a very special brand of humor. Where it's peaceful. There's slush. Did you see anyone? No, I just see you. It's safe. You didn't ask my permission to plant these. Come on over. Let's do something. And the neighbors always watch out for you. I'll deal with it. Chris, he's trying to kill us. Lakeview Terrace, rated PG-13. <laughs> Ever since I won the Win for Life instant game from the New York Lottery, I've been taking much better care of myself. Hey, as long as I keep living, they'll keep paying. Right, Stan? Another million this year, sir. Tune in to SNY for Jets Post Game Live. In depth analysis, player reaction, and expert opinion immediately after every Jets game. Jets Post Game Live, only on SNY. Get to New York Sports here. Nine innings of non-stop sports debate. It's become a circus. Opinion. And that's a perfect way of looking at it. And spin. Enough of the nonsense. Catch host Brian Custer. What a lineup we've got for you. The always animated Scott Farrell. Give me a break. And smooth-talking Brandon Tierney. He's got great stuff. As they take on the hottest sports topics of the day. I love it. And each other. It doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong. In the wheelhouse. Weekdays at 5.30, only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Fade and fold, forget it. They're right back in the game again at 17-16, but they did not uh, go for two there. Well, it, a little bit surprising to me that they didn't go for two. I mean, I, you know, I, you know, I tell you what that tells me. Turner Gill's got a lot of confidence in this offensive football team because I, I think it, had it been me, I, I would have wanted to tie the game right there. Now, Principe will kick off. You see Hamlin with his five catches, 77 yards, and you're right. The Bulls have had the answer every time that they've been pressed. Stevens howling with the return from the 10 gets to the 20 steps over his own teammate and a little room outside. And get out to about the 35 yard line maybe the 36 a 26 yard return. And it'll be decent field position for the Panthers. Nice job right here. And again, uh, you know, he is an excellent return guy. Double teaming right there at the point of attack. That the return was designed to go left. The well, Panthers have it at their own 36-yard line. McCoy is the lone running back. Stull has a wide-open receiver at the 40, making the catch is Kinder. And Kinder will go down close to a first down. He might have it. Shannon was there defensively number seven for Buffalo but the Kinder's got a first down. Take a look at these possessions now and the amount of plays and, uh, and really it, it go from the third one on down the field goal made end of the half just four plays there that was that's all they could do but the nice 10 play 63 yard touchdown drive. So they have eaten up a lot of the clock and a lot of the yardage they've got another first down the ball is at the 47 yard line. Stull, three step drop, gets it out in the flat and completes it, but it's not going to be much there. I, I th actually think he lost yardage on the uh, on the play. Porter made the catch. Might lose a half a yard. Shannon was there defensively. Well, this was an excellent open field tackle by, uh, yeah, that was Shannon. Very nice open field tackle. And they got some help at the end from Thomas, but. He's the guy that made the play. No gain. Second down. Now the I formation. Now here comes the blitz from the Bulls. McCoy at the 50, and he's knifed down from behind, just getting into Buffalo territory. And again, it was Shannon, number seven, who was there. He, he was going to get about four yards on the play. Yeah, this thing really gets strung out. Again, a nice block by the tight end. But it really gets strung out all the way to the sidelines. Fight him. Collins, the fullback, trying to lead the play. Yep. Lott now checks in. Sherrod Lott. 
Drews goes out for the Bulls of Buffalo. They're not going to make it easy for the Panthers here tonight. Porter in motion. Stull runs out of time and takes the sack. Thompson is there. Number 60, a senior from Jefferson, excuse me, Jefferson, Florida, who makes the tackle. Well, this is not very well blocked. This is this. Uh, this was a blitz, but still, it, it, you know, it was not an overloaded blitz. That's a very poor job uh, by Joe Thomas, the right tackle. He just got beat there. And Roosevelt will be deep to receive the kick from Brightus. Left footed kicker. End over end. Takes a bit of a pit bounce and winds up inside the 20 yard line. And we send the final four minutes of this third quarter of play. We've got a good one going here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Panthers lead the Bulls by one, 17 16. Okay, Pixels, IOTV is the best HD picture available anywhere, and that means 110% from all of us. Blue, what do you need to do? Be bluer. Green? Be greener. That's right, because IOTV has the sharpest HD picture you can get. Red! Yes, pink. Why do I have to be pink? Pink makes me look chubby. Oh. Rainbow! Incredible HD picture, awesome HD sound. IOTV brings you the best HD experience free. Hi, I'm Keith Hernandez here at Coin Galleries of Oyster Bay. Old coins can be valuable, so whether you're buying or selling, deal with the best. The professionals at Coin Galleries of Oyster Bay. Bring in your coins, paper money, sports memorabilia, gold, and diamond jewelry. You'll always get a free appraisal and a fair price. Come visit my teammates at Coin Galleries of Oyster Bay. Coin Galleries of Oyster Bay, Long Island's largest rare coin and memorabilia store. Now in three locations, Oyster Bay, Limburg, and Levittown. 1-800-200-0129. Be a permanent part of the Mets' new home with a brick in the City Field Fan Walk, located at the main entrance of City Field. Individually engraved with a name or message, these custom-made bricks will provide a lifetime of memories. Each order includes an exclusive replica brick for a great keepsake. Order your City Field Fan Walk brick today at Mets.com. All proceeds benefit charity through the Mets Foundation, and a portion of the purchase price is tax-deductible. Order yours today at Mets.com. Bulls have the ball back, a chance to take the lead for the second time tonight. 17 16 is our score. Yeah, and that's Danny Barrett right there, the quarterback coach. Now, I'll tell you, he's been a big, big help to Turner Gill. But he's been a long time uh, head coach up in the Canadian Football League, an assistant. Uh, he, he's done a nice job coaching Drew Willie. Rollout pass just a little too tall on the far side intended for Jackson. We've counted it up. But McCullough has 11 tackles already tonight. He led the nation averaging over a dozen a game last year. Let's yeah, compare the quarterbacks the field. tonight. Well and again you saw that incompletion right there by Willie but the numbers are pretty comparable yeah. now but that's one of the few bad throws that Willie has made all night. He's been right on the money and Stull is coming on strong too. Starks is the lone setback. Three wide receivers, two right, one left. Starks has the ball at the 20. Kermelis has the ball, not Starks. He's that backup who runs so very well. A redshirt sophomore. He's from Texas, and they have six players from Texas on this roster. Boy, and watch this. Watch Ray Norrell, the left tackle right there. I mean, he just buries Romeus, the defensive end. I mean, that's just a one on one battle one. By Ray Norrell. So a good run that time. Bray checks into the lineup as a tight end. And their stats last week, they doubled it up. Starks had 179, Thermalus had 102. 
First and ten. After a 13 yard pickup. A pretty good hit. <laughs> Applied to Thermalus right there. <laughs> he took a pretty good pop that time. Uh, he, he delivered in and, and received at the same time. We heard that one pretty clearly up here in the box. That was a collision right here. Watch. Three. He's 235 pounds. This is a big back now. A mistake has got in there and they hold him to a two yard gain. So from the 34 yard line it'll be second down and eight. Rice and Hamlin now the wide receivers also out there is Roosevelt. So we have four wide receivers in this formation out of the shotgun on second and eight. Inside handoff flag is down. Thermalus carried the football. He gets outside the 35 to about the 36. Give him a couple of yards on the play, but we've got a yellow flag on the field. Defense outside number 26. That's a five yard penalty. Well, Ricky Gary stuck his head Second in there down. too soon. Well, I'll tell you what happened right there. They were in in a coverage. Uh, Pitt, Pittsburgh was that we call 22 Yale. It's a man-to-man -man, uh, coverage where they press the wide receivers. And as a cornerback, you just have to know when you're on a flanker, he's off the line of scrimmage. You, you know, you're going to be offside, yeah, right? Yeah, you got to you got to know where the line of scrimmage is. That's a bad mistake. Ball moved out to the 39. It'll be second down coming up. Just the fourth penalty, or excuse me, third penalty on Pitt. One on offense, a couple on defense. Thermalus trying to push his way to that first down. They're going to keep the clock running. Yeah, I think he got it. Based on the spot I'm looking at, and I got a good angle, I think he just has it by a couple inches. We'll see. Ransom leading the defense was the first to hitting. And they're going to bring the chains across the field, I believe. Well, now we're going to see how good my eyes That's are. That's right exactly here, right, Doug. This is, you've <laughs> called it. Nope, they're going to go with you. We're not. Let's not measure. Let's Don't give him the first time. down. I, 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 I had it all the way. <laughs> well, this is going to be a barn, but you can just see it coming now. Yeah. I tell you, this is going to be a great fourth quarter coming up here. And yeah, we have a minute 50 seconds remaining here in the third quarter, and the Bulls once again are beginning to march. They've got the first down at the 42-yard line. Now, I'm not shocked at all at how close this football game is. Uh, you see this young man under center. And you'll understand they're going to put some points on the board. Play action. Rolling as Willie throws and the catch is made on the far side of the no, field. He's, he's out. He definitely was out. Well, Barry was there defensively. Jackson made the catch, but they're saying he was out. Yeah, you know, and that was the second throw now on that sideline that he's really had too high. Take a look at here. He's definitely out of bounds. But again, he forces the receiver up. And then, of course, he's got no chance yeah. to get his feet down. Well, he would have had a first down if he could have gotten his feet in bounds. He did not, so it's second down and ten. Big, big, big series for this pit defense. <laughs> Willie under some pressure, throws it. Down underneath, spinning forward after making the catch <laughs> is Roosevelt. There's McKillop again. Four yard pickup, but McKillop was there to start it right then. That guy makes every single tackle, it seems like. You know, we third down and six here. We talked to, to Dave Monstead about McKillop. Take a look at it here. I mean, he just finds the football, he just doesn't get blocked. You know, and he's not, real, uh, not a real pretty player, and he you know, he, he doesn't run really, really fast. He's just a football player. 6'2", 240 pounds. He is a 50-year senior. The Bulls are four of nine on third down, and they've got a third and six right here. Willie waits, waits, and they got him from behind. Nice. Three-man rush. That was a coverage sack all the way. I mean, they took all the throwing lanes away, and the three-man rush really was effective, and that was uh, Jabal Sheard. He comes right around the corner here. See, all the crossing routes were taken away. That's why he had to hold the football. He is not going to make a mistake throwing the football. That's why he doesn't throw interceptions. Sheard and Romeo sharing that sack. Aaron Barry is deep for the Panthers. He's going to get this football probably inside the 20-yard line. You see the game clock, the play clock winding down. The bouncer, he's got it. Dodges the first man. Look out! 
And Barry just does go down outside the 25 to the 26 yard line. One blocker came flying in there, and that was almost blocking in the back on that play. You know, and the punter, uh, Farden, the punter is an Australian rules football guy. He's from Brisbane, Australia. Whoa, what a block there. They spin him down. Panthers still lead by one. Stay with us. Don't pay another mortgage payment or maintenance fee on your timeshare. Turn it into cash. Call timeshares only. We got rid of those maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only, for making it so easy. At timeshares only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. No more mortgage payments, no more maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only. Call timeshares only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. Our thousands of satisfied customers have made us the largest resale marketplace in the world. Call Timeshares Only now. Your free information kit with our 10 secrets on selling your timeshares waiting. The over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now could be the best time to sell. Call Timeshares Only today. Thank us tomorrow. Call Timeshares Only now and get your free information kit. Turn your timeshare into cash and never pay another mortgage payment, maintenance fee, or tax bill again. Don't wait. Call now. Call 800-314-0762. That's 800-314-0762. Call 800-314-0762 now. Tired of getting last week's burnt mess on this week's dinner? Hi, Steve Barkey, Mr. Do-It-Yourself here. Does this charred mess look familiar? Why spend hundreds on a grill that you can never seem to keep clean? Well, this is Grill Daddy, the revolutionary new grill cleaning tool. The fastest, easiest way to keep your grill clean and your food tasting backyard barbecue great. With one quick turn of the valve, the Grill Daddy releases a stream of water that steam cleans that cooked on, charred on, mess away in seconds. And it sterilizes too. Just preheat, brush, rinse, and sterilize. It's that easy. Grill Daddy leaves your grill spotless and sanitary with no chemicals and no hard work. Use it on stainless steel grills, ceramic grills, iron grills. Grill Daddy keeps them all looking like new. And no more black residue on your grilled food. The stainless steel brush heads are removable, replaceable, and dishwasher safe. And it's the last grill cleaning tool you'll ever need. Nothing cleans like a Grill Daddy. So why spend a fortune on a grill that you can't seem to keep clean when you can get the Grill Daddy? You can get your Grill Daddy today for only $14.99. When you call, ask about our Grill Daddy Pro. It's perfect for all your grilling needs, and it makes a great gift. Order right now, and I'll include my Grill Perfect reusable, color-changing beef thermometer free. Just pay shipping and processing. Never have to guess again. In just three seconds, the color tells you whether it's rare, medium, or well. It's the perfect barbecue companion and is available for chicken and fish. Call now and find out how to get free replacement brush heads for life. Here's how to order. To order your Grill Daddy, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-718-2658. That's 1-800-718-2658. Call now to find out how you can get free brush heads for life. So call 1-800-718-2658 and order today. One point lead as we begin the final quarter of play. We're into the fourth, 15 minutes remaining. A little rendition of Sweet Caroline got these people all fired up here. We'll see what the Panthers could do. They'd like another one of those 60 plus yard, five minute drives here if they can get it. By him, the tight end is in motion. And the pitch comes to the tailback. That, of course, Thompson is there for the hit on Stevens Howling. LaRod Stevens howling. Lost two yards on that play. Let's update the stats after three quarters of play. Well, they're starting to even out pretty good, but that one right down there, Pittsburgh only rushing for 64 yards. Uh, that is, uh, that's not good. I well, mean, they can't put the, all the game into uh, Stull's hands. A lot of that is the, because of the style of this Buffalo defense, though. And keep in mind that McCoy can't do it all, and there's a blitz that got him in trouble. He gets wow. it away and completes the pass. And he's spinning down. That's Porter who made the catch. Thomas was there defensively, but I tell you what, give some credit to Stahl just getting rid of the football. Well, very, very poor blitz pickup up front. I mean, again, they got a free agent uh, right in his face right here. That was again with the safety blitzes. 
are really giving them a lot of problems. That was Justin Winters, the linebacker right there. But uh, that, was, that was a great job of Stoller getting anything out of that play. He didn't get much, but he got back the lost yardage. Didn't get sacked. That was the big thing. That is the big thing. Third and long. Another blitz. Stoll sets, fires. That's a first down. Once again, it's Porter, and he's going to be spun down at midfield. Shannon got him, but J.T. Porter did a terrific job. But Porter's really starting to warm up in this football game. They're looking for him now. Well, he really is, and I'll tell you, uh, uh, Jimmy Williams on that Buffalo sideline, but he is not afraid to bring the heat. They blitzed uh, three out of those four plays in that series. Threw it off his back foot, but made a very accurate throw. That was a zone blitz. That's why he was so wide open. Almost got an additional yardage there for yeah, a possible I, face. Mark. I thought so too. <laughs> First and ten at midfield. Three receivers in the formation. Stull sets, fires, caught by the tight end. That's by him who makes the catch. And right on his back defensively is LaPointe. One of the two Canadians on that defensive team, and they are the co-captains, incidentally, of the, of the defense for Buffalo. They're both from Canada. Again, another blitz, a nice job of Stoller just getting rid of the football. Nice five-yard pickup for the Panthers. We'd like to eat some of that clock. We have about 12 and a half minutes remaining here in the fourth and final quarter. It's been a good one. 17-16. Pittsburgh has the lead. Stoll going deep this time. Nobody will get there. Well, it, you know, there was a collision, and yeah. that's why the wide receiver, uh, the, the ball was thrown correctly, but Turner, uh, there was contact there. Now, in the NFL, that would have been a penalty, but of course, in college football, that's fine. You're right. That reason it was so badly overthrown is that he couldn't get away from the defender and get down that sideline. Right. See some contact right here. Yeah, right there that was the contact, and that threw the timing off of the uh, of the fade route. He had no chance. I tell you, Stahl is really, in my opinion, growing up tonight right in front of us now. He's made a lot of good plays. And he had 11 straight completions before that play. There's the short pass behind. Oh! oh, my goodness, what a great catch. Are you kidding me? McGee. Wow. One-handed it. Unbelievable. Terrific catch by McGee. And uh, let's be honest, not a very well thrown football. Look at this. Wow. Way behind him, and he was able to come down with it. Cook is there to make the stop. Oh, my. What a great oh catch. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, I believe we might see that on Sports <laughs> First and 10 inside the 35. Tripped up just as he got past the line of scrimmage is McCoy. He'll get a couple. But the yards have been tough to come by for him. You talked about that at the start of the game. And, and again, a, a lot of it is the style of this Buffalo defense. I mean, they're, they're, they've they played so many eight man fronts. You know, they've, they've brought the safety blitzes, free safety, strong safety. I mean, uh, Jimmy Williams has got them coming from every direction. It's tough to run against. You got to make the outside throws, you got one on one coverage. Ocean man is the tight end. Oh, here's a crash, yes, sir. He's got a seam there. 20 yard line dragged down from behind, but he's inside the 15. McCoy finally breaking loose, had a little bit of room and he gathers 18 yards. But, you know, that's the first real crack that we've seen uh, McCoy have inside. Take a look at it. Oh, he saw the hole to his left and he really went for it. Didn't nice he, Doug? cut back and that was Jason Pinkston, the left tackle that did a nice job. And uh, when he finds a crack, buddy, he knows what to do with it. And they had to chase him down from behind, but not before he picked up 18. Ball is inside the 15 yard line. 71 yards now. Look for out. McCoy's inside the five. That'll be wow. first and goal. Somebody fired him up, huh? Well, I, and I tell you, and I, I got to be honest, I really think. You know the one problem with the Mid-American schools, they don't have the depth. Uh, you know that some of the, uh, the a, a pit has in their defensive front, and I think they're tired. I think they're really tired here now as we get to the 10-minute mark in the fourth quarter, and uh, and Matt Cavanaugh right now is just pounding it at him. Now keep in mind that most of their scoring drives tonight have been long drives, 60-plus yards, taking time off the clock and wearing down that defense. 
They're going to stay with him. He's going to push his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Two yard touchdown run and the Panthers will go up on top again. And every time they get down inside the five yard line you, you notice they're going left. The big old number 77 pinched in at number 55 C.J. Davis and they have done a nice job for that for Tony Wise. Uh, keep that in mind line. too the McCoy had only one touchdown last week. This is his third touchdown tonight. He's been the go to guy when they get close to the goal. And that's the one thing the Panthers have done. They've finished four of their last five drives with points. PAT is coming up from Connor Lee. He booms it through there. Well, the Panthers march down the field, reestablish a little authority here. It's 24 to 16. We've got more to come. Still 10 21 to play. The push, the touchdown for Pitt. You're up. Nah, you go ahead. All right. Impressive. Where'd you learn that? Some fancy golf school. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? What are you, taking lessons? Come on, what's your secret? You got your own pro? Yep, got a bunch of them. The key to better golf is the best instruction, and Golf Digest is the only place you can learn from the game's hottest pros. Ernie Els, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods. Call today, and for just $14.97, you'll get 12 issues of Golf Digest with easy-to-follow techniques, equipment reviews, pocket tips, and much more. Subscribe now, and you'll get this DVD free. Renowned instructor Jim McLean demonstrates practice plans that will help improve your game. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. See the back pages in a whole new life. It's unbelievable. As Chris Cotter. It isn't like great right. pictures are growing on trees. Joe Beningo. Who's kidding who? And the daily news writers behind the top stories deliver the hottest New York sports topics with debate. Is there any place for this in baseball? Opinion. I just don't like the attitude of this team. And a whole lot of attitude. Of course he hit him on purpose. Daily News Live, presented by City. Weekdays at 5 with encores at 11 and 1.30 a.m. Only on SNY. Get what do I love most about my voice? The luscious, velvety texture? The way I say, Massa Piqua? I bet you wish you could have a voice like that. Well, you can't. But you can get Optimum Voice for as little as $19.95 a month. That's pretty special, too. Unlimited calling to the US, Canada, and Puerto Rico, as little as $19.95 a month. Just call 1-888-THE-VOICE and make Optimum Voice yours. Checkers got a hot new taste. That's a slam dunk. The new buffalo chicken sandwich, hand dunked in Frank's red hot buffalo sauce with lettuce and ranch for that hot and cool buffalo flavor. The new buffalo chicken sandwich. Right now, get two for just three bucks. You gotta eat. Little place, big taste. That's Checkers. Open till midnight or later. In is the score. Another touchdown for McCoy, his third of the night. And the Panthers once again are up by eight, but there's still a lot of time left. Kickoff will be handled by Lucas Briggs. Deep man you see right there in the center of the screen, number 18, is Roosevelt. So once again, the challenge has been thrown back on the Bulls. Here. Oh, absolutely. And remember, you know, they're a touchdown and a two-point conversion from tie in the game. From the five, Roosevelt. Knife down as he gets to the 21 yard line a 16 yard return. Good coverage on the special teams for the University of Pittsburgh. Making a hit down there was Eric Thatcher. Let's take a look at this cutback right here by McCoy. Great eyes right there. I tell you what he did most of the work on that drive carried the ball on the last four plays on the drive and eventually got the touchdown himself. Now the, buff, the Buffalo defense just looked like they just kind of got worn down on that drive. Let's see if Willie can answer. The power running out across the 25 yard line for a gain of four. That is Starks. 
Well, the last 10 minutes of this game, I tell you, th this is going to be exciting because you got a really good offensive football team and quarterback on the field right now with Willie. Pressure's on the pit defense. A second down coming up. Game clock is running. Willie trying to air it out. Incomplete. Nice, nice coverage by Aaron Berry, number 17. And uh, again, in talking to Phil Bennett, he feels like Berry's his best corner because when they go nickel, they put Berry inside of that nickel. And I agree with that. It's just straight press man to man here, and he throws a fade, but it's really well covered by Barry gets his head back inside that's classic classic job by me should have got a little width though when he turned his head back well, Willie was 13 of 18 in the first half and so far here in the second half he's three for nine so it's yep. been a little bit of a change yep a big change a lot more press coverage now by Pitt they're pressing again corners are all right up in their faces but he completes the pass because the defender fell down the ball's going to be a near midfield and I think that was Barry. Well, McCullough made the tackle to, on Roosevelt, who picked up good yardage, but you could see the defender slip just as the pattern opened up. Watch. Yeah, right there, there he, he goes. Down on the ground. And again, that was a nice inside move by the receiver. And uh, Barry was not able to recover. Well, it's a gain of 21 yards for the Bulls of Buffalo. They've got it at the 48, their own 48. Clock continues to roll. Willie will go from the shotgun. Four receivers in this formation. Let's a little bit of a delay. Oh, there's handoff. McKillop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just, Boy, did he straighten them up? Just follow number 40, and you're going to see the football probably. You're huh? absolutely <laughs> right. Take a look at number 40 right here. Watch him sniff this thing out. Watch him find the hole right there and meet some head on right in the hole. Classic, classic tackling for him. Why linebackers make a lot of tackles. So Boy, defensive linemen have to slow him up. Give me a shot at him, and he goes and gets him, doesn't he? He's just a flat football player. You know, they had uh, HB Blades before playing that middle linebacker spot. Boy, they've had two really good ones in a row. And on 13 tackles here tonight, less than eight and a half left. Willie dumps it off. About the 44 yard line of the Pitt Panthers. He has run out of bounds. It's going to be Rice third. made the catch. Third and short. That's going to set up. Eight yard pickup on the play. But I think, uh, take a look at it here. This is Jabal Sheard right there. 97. Looks like he got hurt on that play. This is a very big play in this football game Huge. right now. Huge play in this football game. See what Willie can do on third and two. This game is flying. It's already eight minutes to go is all. It's because they've been keeping possession of the football, both teams. Been a fun game. Yeah. Here comes the blitz. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He is not going to make it. Not that time. James Starks, the guy with four or five speed, probably going to lose a yard. So what do you do now? Well, I, I think uh, if I'm Buffalo, I think I go for it. Let's see. Well, the way Pitt's offense has been, if you give them the football back with about seven minutes left in the game, you might not see it again, you yeah. know? Oh, you're right. Yep, here comes the wide receivers. They're going to spread it out and, uh, and let Willie see if he can get him a first down here. Would not be surprised to see a blitz a call right here from Phil Bennett. Looks like they're going to take a timeout. Yep, Buffalo. we're going to take some time. That's our first charge. Team timeout. First timeout of the second half seconds. for Buffalo. And I think time that's out. a wise decision, too, don't you, Doug? You've, you've got to make sure what you're going to do. Yeah, especially uh, if there's any any confusion all there. You see uh, Danny Barrett talking to Drew Willie and Coach Turner there is making the calls. He's going to he's going to make the call on the play. He calls all the plays. Turner Gill, of course, played for Nebraska, was a finalist for the Heisman, assistant at Nebraska, also an assistant with the Packers. And there was some talk that he might have been a candidate to go back to Nebraska as the head coach. But he did not. He's at Buffalo instead. Yeah, you know, er everything in life is timing, and I, I really anticipate him having a great year. This is a good football team he has, and I think had the Nebraska job come open after this year, I think that would have been a big difference. You know, he. 
You know, he was uh, five and seven last year. He didn't have a winning year, but I mean, that doesn't describe at all the job that he's done for the Bulls. It's been really uh, uh, amazing. Well, they were one and one for one on fourth down last week, and they are one for one on fourth down this week. Will it be two for two? That's Flags all over the place, and yeah. two receivers were standing side by side. Well, they they had two people in motion at one time, and I, I'm sure I'm surprised that flag didn't come a lot sooner because the tight end was in motion and the wide receiver moved. Everybody a, was in motion. That's a penalty. Now the pass was complete to Jackson, but they're going to back this one up. Yeah. No, I, the shift on yeah. the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay fourth down. That might change some thinking too. Yeah. Now they're going to punt it. I think. You know. Boy, there is nothing that boils you as much as that. When you take a timeout and then you have a guy, a wide receiver, go out there and make a mistake. The tight end was supposed to be moving. The wide receiver was not. There you see Coach Gill, he's not happy with that at all. Barry is the deep man for the Panthers. Farden will kick. What a turnaround. You go back and think about it. You look at this game, Doug. Penalties against Buffalo have been a huge factor here tonight. Yeah, two personal fouls uh, really were a big factor in particular. Not much there on the return. A 30 yard kick, a five yard return. A set up shop at the 33 yard line. The Panthers hoping to eat up a lot of what's left. Six minutes and 48 seconds to be played. At Barron's, we find investing opportunities that the crowd missed and give you investing ideas and insights that can help your portfolio grow. Subscribe now and you'll receive eight weeks of Barron's plus Barron's Online with access to daily columns, market analysis, and tools like our Stock Screener and Market Lab, all for only $19.95. Call now, 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600 for Barron's. Chris Carlin. Oh my lord! Adam Shine. A couple nuggets to chew on. Ticking on the hottest sports topics. Let's hit the phone. Your calls. Where you get to take control of the show. And each other. That's a disgrace, Chris. They may not always agree. What are you crazy? But when it comes to debating New York sports, they're a match made in heaven. I got your back, big I boy. I appreciate that. Loud mouths. Weeknights at 6 p.m. only on SNY. Write it down. Get your New York sports here. Time passes quickly, and now you realize mom and dad are getting older and need more care than you can provide. Have they properly planned for the future? Have you? It's easy to feel overwhelmed when faced with elder law and estate planning questions. But it's simple with the right guidance. Hi, I'm Jennifer Kona. At Genser Dubau, Genser & Kona, elder law is all we do. Call us at 1-888-ELDER-55 and we'll send you our free guide to elder law and estate planning. We'll bring you peace of mind. Able Man marches on, making sure we all drive smart. My salesman from Able knows I love gadgets. The voice-activated sync technology in my new Ford, it's awesome. Right now at Able Ford, you can drive home in a 2008 Ford Flex all-wheel drive SEL for only $2.99 per month. Able Man and Able Ford, ready, willing, and able to help you drive American for less. Able Ford, Rockville Center. To call now. It is 24 to 16, and now it's time for the Buffalo defense to answer, huh? Yeah, that's uh, the coordinator right there, Jimmy Williams, and uh, he's done a great job with his defense tonight. A lot of good calls, very aggressive. Let's see if they can physically hang in there now. There's going to be nothing there that time for McCoy. Akabandu makes the tackle. You know, Jimmy Williams, a uh, former walk on at Nebraska. Take a look at this. Now, look at the penetration. See, they stun it inside, and that's a nice job filling by the linebacker. That, that's a good defensive plan right there. Uh, you know, former first round draft choice, I think played 12 years in the National Football League as a linebacker. Loss of a yard. Play action. On the rollout, got a man open. Oh. Can't hang on. Right at the 45 yard line. The intended receiver is McGee. Cedric could not come up with it, so it'll be third down and 11. 
You know, I, I think Stahl could have run right there and probably got at least uh, seven or eight yards anyway. See, he was wide open here. Let's take a look at the throw. Yeah, wasn't a great throw, but it's catchable. That's funny. And McGee, he made that phenomenal catch uh, earlier, the one-handed, right. uh, and he wasn't able to come up with that one. Seven of 11 on third down. And what you don't want if you're Pittsburgh is a quick three and no, out here. you really don't want that at all. This, this uh, Buffalo offense is just too good. A lot of time in the pocket. Got Guns it. it. First down and more at midfield. They will finally run him down from behind. Great job that time by Turner. Newton made the tackle. Mm -hmm. Newton missed the tackle. And that enabled Turner to get away. And that, Doug, is a huge play for Pitt right there. Well, that's one of the big plays uh, that Dave Wonstadt was talking about. It. And watch Stahl work his way up into the pocket. See the double team right there? And he steps up in the pocket. And that was his own blitz, and he came wide open. Ball at the 42 yard line, first down 10 for the Panthers. Nice. What a great shot that was, too. Nice protection. Terrific job by Turner. They finally do drag him down from behind. Reverse action Dickerson. One of the tight ends. There's Darren Doran Dickerson, a junior from Imperial, Pennsylvania. <laughs> He'll pick up nine yards on the play. We haven't seen him tonight. No, we haven't. And I'll tell you what, you normally don't see a tight end running the reverse either. <laughs> but he shows some pretty good jets right here. Pretty good size, 230. Wow, that was a pretty good. I see a helmet laying on the ground there. That was a good collision. Ooh, ball came out late. Uh-uh-uh. Nine-yard pickup, second and one. But that a rhetoric major. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Sidestepping one tackler and then being dragged down is McCoy. Shannon made the tackle. He gets two, and that's enough for a first down. 24-16. Pittsburgh has the lead. You can see the clock continues to roll. But I think right here, you, you, you force. Jimmy Williams to bring the blitz and you keep handing the football to McCoy and seeing if you can't wear him down a little bit again now on this drive. McCoy has 88 yards so far this evening on 12 carries. He's the lone setback. And the quick out pass is complete to the tight end Dickerson. He is spun down as he gets inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. Newton is there defensively. You know, based on the way they use him, I think he's a hybrid tight end. He's <laughs> kind of a right. half half wide out, yeah. half a half tight end. I think he might be more wide out than yeah, tight I, end. I think so too. <laughs> Again, accurate throw, nice block by the wide out there. That was Turner out there Turner. leading the blocking. So Dickerson has been out on a couple of big plays, and this is second down and about three. At the 25 of the Bulls, clock moving, 3.45 to go in the game. There's another short toss, but it is behind the intended receiver. That was the fullback, Collins, who could not get his body squared around to make the catch, and that was not a particularly good throw. No, it wasn't, and, I, and I'm kind of surprised there with really, you know, second and three, and you really figure you got two downs. Yeah, that, that's a very poor throw. That's one of the, it, he hasn't had many in the second half, but that certainly was. But I'm surprised they didn't run the football there with McCoy, because really you kind of think they got two downs to make three yards. Well, they've moved at 53 yards so far, and they've eaten up three minutes of the clock. And we still have about three and a half minutes to play in the game. And there's another bad pass that's incomplete. It was intended for another of the tight ends, John Pelusi. Number 83 was the intended receiver. But uh, you know, this is the first time now that Stahl has been in a situation like this at the very end of the game where you got to make some plays. And uh, let's be honest, he has not made them. And that brings Connor Lee on the field. Well, not on that last set of downs, that's for sure. So it'll be a 42 yard field goal attempt. Kick is up. It's long enough, and it's wow. good. Boy, that's a pressure kick right there. Sure is. 42 yards for Connor Lee. So the Panthers expand their lead a little bit with the three-pointer. The field goal makes it 27-16. We'll be right back. 
pay another mortgage payment or maintenance fee on your timeshare. Turn it into cash. Call timeshares only. We got rid of those maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only, for making it so easy. At timeshares only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. No more mortgage payments, no more maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only. Call timeshares only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. Our thousands of satisfied customers have made us the largest resale marketplace in the world. Call timeshares only now. Your free information kit with our 10 secrets on selling your timeshares waiting. The over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now could be the best time to sell. Call timeshares only today. Thank us tomorrow. Call timeshares only now and get your free information kit. Turn your timeshare into cash and never pay another mortgage payment, maintenance fee, or tax bill again. Don't wait. Call now. Call 800-314s. Auto insurance wasn't something I used to get animated about. Until I switched to insurance. Paul is an actual insurance customer. Here we go, Paul. With competitive rates and quote by print convenience, insurance makes it easy to save time and money on car insurance. And don't forget, if you ever run into any trouble, special agents are here to help you 24-7. Who knew I could be so drawn to my auto insurance company? Take a fresh look at your auto insurance. Get your quote from insurance today. Seven sixteen. The Panthers have the lead thanks to that 42-yard field goal. We still have three and a half minutes to play here at Heinz Field. It was another lengthy drive for the Panthers. They went 53 yards, took three minutes 17 seconds. It just kind of petered out right at the end, didn't it? Yeah, they really did. And I was just, you know, I hate to be critical, but I really thought they should have run the football there when they had it second and three. And then, of course, uh, Stahl uh, made a couple of throws that weren't very good. Kickoff is headed downfield to Jackson. He's at the 10. And he's knifed down as he gets to the 20 yard line. Well, that's where the Bulls will start, but they have got a lot of work to do now in three and a half minutes. Yep, 79 yards to go now for uh, Willie. And, uh, but boy, I'll tell you, he, he's the guy that can do it. And now you're pretty much in a throw, throw, throw situation. They might even go no huddle here. Be, you know, because of obviously two scores down. Well, you see what he has done 18 of 29 207 yards a one touchdown pass that he had no interceptions he makes the catch on the far side and that'll keep the clock moving as the yep. pass goes to rice yeah they're going no huddle just like I thought they would and uh, that was not a very good throw by Willie that's one of his poor throws so far tonight well, you can see that clock winding down and when you're down by more than one touchdown, it's a lot tougher. There's the inside handoff. He's going to get starts close to 100 yards on the night as he is hit late out of bounds near the 27 yard line. Barry ran him out, making the initial hit on him, but he picked up good yardage. Give him six. That was a good job of him getting out of bounds and understanding the situation. Now we're going to see a lot of zone coverage here, I'm sure, from Pitt. But remember with that 40 second clock rule even though he got out of bounds. Yep. This play clock is already down to 15 seconds. Yep. Darks will pick up a first down. As he gets outside the 32 yard line. McCullough and the company there defensively. You know, but but needing two scores, this is uh, they're playing right into the hands of Pitt now because of the, they're going to have to start working the football down the field. That's going to be incomplete. Fields was right there defensively. 
That was a great play by Elijah Fields. A really a good play. And it, the biggest thing is he didn't interfere with him. Watch him get his right hand in here right at the end. Beautiful. That's textbook. Make the tackle with your left hand. Get that right hand in on the football. That was a classic, classic play for Elijah Fields. Two minutes, 17 seconds to play. Second and 10, but they did at least try to go downfield, and they will again. That one's caught for a first down. Plenty of defenders there, but Rice made the catch, picks up 11. Another first down for the Bulls of Buffalo. Good for Buffalo, first down. Four wide receiver formation. They continue to use Starks in the backfield, and he goes out on the pattern. Uh oh. Down he goes. Mistake is pretty excited about the sack, and that will definitely slow him down. Sherd and Tucker were there as well. Boy, the clock is running. I think this is a stunt. It is a stunt inside. Makes a great spin move on the offensive guard. That's a great spin move by Bustakas. Second and 18. Second down 18. They flood the right side. And once again, Willie running for his life. Uh oh. Now he unloads it. Oh, the interception. Interception. That's Thatcher who picks it off. And that ends the string. Unbelievable. Wow. You know what, though? But it, in a two minute situation, you know, and you're behind, you have to take chances and right. throw it down the field. And of course, on the scramble, and uh, what a streak, though. Take a look at this. What a streak for Drew Willie. Got to be up to, like, what, 275 without an interception. He's got pressure. He does not see. He doesn't see him step in front of him. He, he never saw Thatcher. He didn't see him. He was trying to get the pass downfield. Couldn't do it. Thatcher picks it off. And the Panthers will relax a little bit with a minute 25 remaining. Going to post their first victory. Hammer time, two tight ends. McCoy tackles himself. <laughs> he, he, he made two, he made about five moves at the same time, and down he went. This is natural grass here at Heinz Field, and wow, 284 there's, without an interception that's until that. Willie right there on the sideline. Wow, what? Well, I tell you what, though, that's an amazing number. If you play quarterback, I don't care at what level you're playing quarterback. You're going to throw interceptions. It's going to happen. I mean, uh, you know, it's going to be off of receivers' hands. The ball's going to be tipped. Something's going to happen. That's a real, real testament to him and that offensive coaching staff. Second down coming up. Stull has done a good job tonight. Yes, he has. He's really grown up for Pitt, I think, tonight. McCoy will get maybe a yard, possibly two. Wrapped up by Josh Thomas. Thomas. Most important thing for Stahl tonight is to get a dose of confidence. He, he really needs it. I think he's got some tonight. And the fans beginning to cheer because this one is going to wind up and wind down. A very game effort by the Buffalo Bulls and the Panthers restoring a little credibility here tonight with the job they did. Remember they scored I think on like five of their last six possessions they got points. Yeah they did and the offensive line I think really came alive for them tonight. The defense made some plays. They finally got a big play down the field and they better because they got Iowa coming up next. Yeah it will not get any easier then they're going to be looking at a, a very tough Big East football schedule. But there's a celebration going on in Heinz Field. The Panthers have won their first game of the season. Did it in style, beating the Buffalo Bulls here tonight by a final of 27 to 16. You see Dave Wanstad in the middle of things there. We're going to be talking to him and one of the players when we come back with more from Pittsburgh. Panthers win it tonight, 27 16. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? Come on, what's your secret? Would you take lessons? You got your own pro? Yep, I got a bunch of them. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Get 12 months of Golf Digest with easy-to-follow tips and techniques for just $14.97. Order today and receive this DVD absolutely free. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. 
to SNY for Jets Open Mic, presented by Motorola. Full coverage of Coach Mangini's press conference every Monday and Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Only on SNY. Get to New York Sports here. I'm Kenny Choi. Today's Mets-Phillies game has been rained out. We can catch the NL East rivalry right here on SNY as the Mets send Pedro Martinez to the mound. Take on Jamie Moyer and the Phils at Shea. Coverage begins tomorrow at 2 p.m. on SNY. Back 27-16 is the final. We're happy to be joined downstairs by Dave Wanstadt, coach of the winning Pittsburgh Panther football team here tonight. Dave, I thought uh, a little bit of a slow start. Buffalo played very well. They did. They did a great job. We didn't. Uh, we did not start fast enough. You know, particularly on on defense, uh, we missed too many tackles. Uh, you know, give up a, 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 a touchdown which which we shouldn't have. Uh, our offense came through. We needed to score some points after last week, and uh, they put together a nice drive. But Buffalo, uh, they got a heck of a football team. Turner Gill does a fantastic job with those guys. Dave, this is Doug Graber. I, I really thought that uh, your quarterback really uh, kind of grew up for you tonight, got a dose of confidence, and uh, made some plays for you. Yeah, he, he did. You know, we, we got to continue to keep reminding ourselves that this was his second full-time game that he's played from start to finish and make sure we don't get ahead of ourselves. Well, you did a terrific job, and you finally slowed them down a little bit. But I, I have to give them some credit because they tried to answer everything that you did until did. right at the end. I give them a lot of credit. They did a fantastic job. We got a lot of work to do. Talk about your middle linebacker a little bit because McCullough, who makes all kinds of tackles, had another big night tonight. Every time he looked at the football, number 40 was there. Well, you know, this was kind of his type of game, you know, where, where they're going to lie up in the eye and, and pond the football and, and, and run the ball. Uh, you know, he had more opportunities today. Scott's a great player. I mean, he's, he's the anchor of that defense, and uh, it was good to see him have a good game. Dave, I noticed uh, offensively, uh, when you got down inside the five-yard line, you leaned heavily on the left side of your offensive line, and McCoy certainly made some plays for you tonight. Three touchdowns. He did, and that was good to get him on track a little bit. And, uh, you know, he, he's, for us to win, he's got he's to play well. We all know that. Well, he finished with 91 yards, and he got the three touchdowns, and the Panthers get the victory. Dave Wanstadt, thank you very much. Okay, Congratulations. Thank you, guys. All right, we'll see you down the road. Panther band doing a little celebrating, tooting their own horns, and they should. Their offense played pretty good tonight. Well, they did, and, and Dave is right. After I looked at the tapes of this Buffalo, this is a good football team. Now, this is a team, you know, that beat UTEP 42-17, to 17, and, and I, I'll be very, very surprised if Buffalo isn't a major factor in the Mid-American Conference. I would not be surprised to see them go to a bowl game. Well, as it turned out, the total offense was very even. Buffalo, 66 plays, 348 yards. Pittsburgh, 65 plays, 352 yards. Wow, that, you can't get any closer than no. that. We will remind our affiliates that we're going to take another break, and then we will come back to wrap things up here at Heinz Field. Panthers victorious for the first time this season, 27-16 over the Bulls of Buffalo. That's the final. We'll be right back. If you have diabetes, then you know what this is. It's your lifeline. Luckily for us, these new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Access Diabetic Supply will send you one of these new meters, no charge. And if you have Medicare or private insurance, your testing supplies may also be covered. Call Access now to see if you qualify. They bill Medicare or your insurance company directly. There are no upfront costs and they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. Call now and find out why thousands of people choose access. For more information, call 1-800-503-3154. Operators are standing by. Access is America's choice for diabetic supplies. Call Access today. You'll be glad you did. 27-16 is the final score. I'm John Sanders along with Doug Graber. Some fireworks going off outside Heinz Field along the riverbank. Remember, it was Buffalo that scored first, and then they missed the extra point. It wasn't even a, a good attempt. It didn't go anyplace, and things started to change. But I think one of the things that happened here tonight, you look back at the Bulls, some self-inflicted situations where they got called for three personal foul penalties. They had another penalty when they were going for a first down. So some of those penalties really came at important parts of the ball game as far as Buffalo was concerned. Oh, absolutely, and again, especially, obviously, the personal fouls and, uh, you know, 
Uh, that's a mistake, and I Coach Gill will not be happy with that, but uh, Buffalo is a good, good football team with an outstanding quarterback. Uh, I really like their game plan. I thought defensively they, lot, they really did a lot of good things. Uh, for Pitt, the biggest thing is Pitt's a talented team. I think that Pitt, as they go and mature and hopefully get better during the season, I, I think they'll be a big factor in the Big East. Well, you got to think, though, that also that Buffalo is going to be a factor in the MAC this year, which is something that hasn't happened in years for the Bulls. Well, I mean, it's never happened. So, I mean, this is all uncharted territory for them in the Mid-American Conference. And, uh, you know, and of course, you know, being in the East Division, I mean, wow. You know, you've got Miami, who played at Wisconsin. they got Bowling Green, who beat uh, this Pitt team last week. Ohio U, who, who had a great game against Ohio State today. Uh, you know, Akron had a big win today. Uh, Kent State, that East Division, uh, they're going to have their work cut out for them. Well, here's the schedule. Temple, that will not be a pushover game. And then they go to Missouri. The Tigers, who were one of the surprises along with the University of Kansas last year, appear to be pretty well loaded this year, too. So we'll see. Then they go to Central Michigan. And then Western Michigan as MAC conference play begins. Let's check out some of the final stats. We've touched on some of the numbers. And as it wound up, even though Buffalo dominated the very first part of the ball game in the opening quarter of play, final stats wound up being fairly even. Well, you know, the, the surprise here again is that the pit just was not really able to rush the football better. I mean, uh, you know, Buffalo outgained them in the rushing attack. And again, I, I got to give a lot of credit to uh, Buffalo's uh, defense. You know, they brought a lot of blitzes. They, they really stopped a lot of the running lanes for McCoy. They got a lot of eight man fronts. That's why a stall was so important thrown for 241 yards tonight. He had one on one coverage. He made a lot of really good throws at one point. I know he had eight completions in a row. I was a little disappointed in the two throws he made uh, it late in the game. Well, Stahl threw it 33 times, completed 22 of them, faced some pretty good pressure. You talked about the fact that the Bulls just kept blitzing them all night long. Yeah, they, they brought it all night long, and that was the pressure right there and made a great throw to McCoy outside. That was big. And again, here, stepping up into the pocket and hitting Turner, that was a zone blitz, and that's exactly what you have to do. You have to buy time, and somebody's going to come open. Here's what it looks like for the Panthers. They'll go against... The Big Ten Iowa Hawkeyes play at Syracuse and uh, number 21 South Florida. That's October the 2nd. I'll tell you, that's going to be a test. Well, <laughs> South Florida, and, you know, I, and I had to, had them last week. Uh, they are much improved over last year. I mean, South Florida, I think, is going to be very, very tough to beat down there. But no question about that. And they play at Navy and then they host Rutgers here later on. So the schedule's not going to get any easier. As it wound up, McCoy scored three touchdowns, carried 19 times, and picked up 91 yards. And we want to remind our affiliates again that we are going to take one more break before we're finished. to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronix Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronix Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronix Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget, and my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. The Panthers win it here tonight. 27 to 16 is the final. Let's take a look at some top 25 scores. 
top 25 action according to the Associated Press and there as always early in the season there are some surprises so let's take a look no surprise there Georgia even though they won the week before dropped to number two where they laid it on Central Michigan Ohio State had a little problem with Ohio won that one no problem for Oklahoma over Cincinnati and in the second quarter pretty good battle going on in the state of Florida well, it sure was you know that's uh, <laughs> that that is a huge game in the state of Florida believe me. All right, let's take a look at some more. Missouri rolls it up on Missouri State, 42 to nothing, and that game's not over yet. East Carolina surprises West Virginia, 24 to three. Auburn over Southern Miss, 27 to 13. Number 10, Texas and UTEP will play later on. Here's some more scores. And of course, uh, Alabama, uh, boy, Tulane is really hanging in there well with them. Louisiana Tech hanging in there with Kansas. You know, I'll tell you what all these scores represent to me. This 85 scholarship limit, I mean, it's really even the playing field. Those are all pretty good football games up to this point. Well, and of course, if you're Kansas, such a surprise team last year, you're not going to sneak up on people this year, <laughs> are you? No, you're, you're surely not. Uh, that's not going to happen. And of course, uh, Kansas uh, has to go play South Florida. I think it's, uh, I believe it's next Friday night. And uh, they better buckle up that. That'll be a great football game. Should be a great game. We had a good game here tonight. The Panthers kept moving back on top by a point here and there after the Buffalo Bulls scored first tonight. You know, th this game for me just flew by because it was so competitive. The strategy on both teams was very, very obvious. Uh, you know, I watched the coaching adjustments as the game went on. And again, it was a fun football game to watch. And obviously, Pitt had their backs to the wall, buddy, after getting beat last week. So th this was a, a must-win game for this Pitt Panther team. Well, look at South Florida and Central Florida hooked up in a pretty good one in the third quarter there, 17 to 10. Well, you know, there's a little history there. And, of course, this is the last game in that series, and South Florida has dominated. So this is Central Florida's last shot. That's at Central Florida. And uh, uh, they want to get South Florida bad. Well, you saw the scores there. UNLV in the second quarter has a lead over Utah. Wake Forest just barely gets by Mississippi. Penn State wins their second game in a row. They didn't score 66, though, this week. Well, that's a big win because, you know, again, they had the problems this week with uh, some players that were suspended. So that's a good win for Joe. And South Carolina ranked number 24 falls to Bandy. Wow. Vanderbilt wins at 24 to yep. 17. Illinois over Eastern Illinois and Connecticut beats Temple in overtime. Yeah, and I, in fact, I, I, I think that was uh, like a triple overtime. I'm not sure of that, but uh, I knew that was going to be a tough one for Connecticut going down to Temple and they had some horrible, horrible weather uh, to contend with. And again, that's another uh, Big East team versus a Mac team. And Akron rolling it up on Syracuse 42 to 28. So it doesn't look like it's going to get any easier for the Orange this year. No, it really doesn't. And uh, that's really surprising that that program is struggling like they are. It is. Louisville, a big winner over Tennessee Tech 51 to 10. The finale, I think, of the fireworks display here. <laughs> that's what kept a lot of people in the seats. Pitt was ranked number 25 when yep. the season began. Do you think that was too high? Uh, I, absolutely, I do. I mean, it, they were five and seven last year. It's not like they were nine and two or something like that. They were five and seven. Obviously, that ranking was, uh, you know, the, the win over West Virginia, the last game yeah, of the that season. Was huge, yeah. That was huge. Uh, you know, Dave Wanstead has had three very good recruiting classes in a row, but but honestly. I think that they were just a little bit antsy on that ranking. I don't think they should have been ranked nor deserved to be ranked. And now, of course, uh, you know, they're going to have to really earn it this season to get back up in those rankings again. But this pit team is uh, is a talented team. It really is. And it's a young team. If they can stay healthy, they should get better as the season progresses. And I would not be surprised at all if in the latter part of the season, they're fighting for a bowl berth someplace. Well, it took McCoy a while to get going tonight, but we're going to take a look at some of his play. He scored three of the touchdowns. LaShawn McCoy. Yeah, and watch how all three of these go to the left. That was a, a, a nice job by uh, Malecki pulling on that one. And again, this little flare pass and a, a good block by the tight end. 
Good throw by Stahl. Here again, going to the left, same play with Malecki pulling. That's just that power play, pulling the backside guard. And here was a big one where he caught him in a, in a blitz and, uh, and blew it out the backside. And that was big and another one where he cut, cut back. Nice job. This guy is a talented 210 pound running back that uh, I mean, he, he can be in the same class as Tony Dorsett and uh, Curtis Martin. Uh, boy, they've had a couple great ones here and, and obviously the hopes are that he'll he'll be uh, in that category. Well, see those terrific numbers from his freshman year and tonight officially now they've adjusted it. McCoy goes 20 carries for 93 yards. So that's really the best game that he's had. You yeah. mentioned last week he struggled uh, being held to less than four yards per carry. And as Dave Wanstat told us at the end of the game, he's got to produce for them to be a good team. Well, he has to, you know, and, and, and again, it, it was not an easy road for McCoy tonight uh, because of what the Buffalo defense did. They played, they knew they had to stop him. I mean, they played a bunch of eight man fronts. They brought a bunch of safety blitzes. They filled all the gaps. But, you know, even so, eventually a good back like McCoy is going to find a crack and break one. And I think also you raised the point that maybe the Buffalo team was getting a little tired in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and that's the problem with the Mid-American teams. You know, they're never going to have the depth uh, of, uh, of some of the, quote, what people think are the, are the bigger level teams. And, uh, you know, they can't rotate defensive linemen the whole game and, and keep everybody fresh. And, and I do think they were down at the end. And, of course, you see a lot of upsets with MAC teams early in the season, uh, but you know as, as injuries go, it, it happens. Panthers win it, their first win of the season, 27-16 is the final score. For Doug Graber, I'm John Sanders. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Thanks for watching, everybody. Life for Chris, 47, is his wife Ellen, their daughter Julie, and their son James. Chris is a contractor. Ellen works for a home developer. They had some life insurance, but knew it couldn't cover the family's expenses if something happened to either of them. Then within a month, two friends died. No life insurance. Chris got the message. A friend said, call Select Quote. They comparison shop the highly rated term life insurance companies they represent and save you plenty. Chris called and was delighted to learn he could get a $350,000 policy for under $27 a month. Ellen could get a $250,000 policy for under $18 a month. Life is too precious not to protect. Call this number or go to selectquote.com. Select quote. We shop, you save. SNY.TV, the latest info and great features with original content. Welcome to Nissan Post Game Extra, exclusively on SNY.TV. Exclusive interviews. From the right side of the plate, you've been unbelievable this year. Game highlights. Delgado hits one deep. And the best insider info with our network of New York team blogs. Plus, get your team gear at the SNY shop. SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. Check it out today. Explore her grandeur. Appreciate her beauty. Protect her for tomorrow. We all share the responsibility for protecting nature and preserving the environment for future generations. You can help by recycling your old rechargeable batteries. Call 877-2-RECYCLE or visit us online at calltorecycle.org to learn where you can recycle your old rechargeable batteries. Please, 